now. You went Donald Duck on that one. Yeah, that that was that disgusting. Was a, uh, Just so we all okay, know, you can go live now. <laughs> we already people. are live. What? <laughs> I have one hundred and sixteen thousand points. I have one hundred and forty-one thousand points. I have oh. 242,000 points. Get oh. on my fucking <laughs> level. Well, I spent my points during campaign one when I was an audience member supporting the show, so. Look sorry. how the timetables turns. <laughs> sorry. <How> timetables. <laughs> yep. Mathematics. That's what we're doing tonight, folks. We already know I'm bad at that after the bun off. incident. Oh, God. What the fuck? Oh. How does Timitor have more points than me? That's absurd. <laughs> no, no, no money about, about that question you posed that I saw on Twitter. What? Oh, the Kirby thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh my god. No, not the Kirby thing. Well, I'm. I'm. So, uh, why? Why is that? Why can't we talk about? It? You're the one who posed the question. I did. It was it was a shower thought, and I don't like it. But yes. <laughs> yeah. This is why we always wait until an hour after our shower to decide if what we want to tweet is a good idea or not. That's Listen, fair. I, you the, wait. the correct That's answer cool. is Kirby didn't invent Vor, but he definitely facilitated it. <laughs> oh, God damn it! Welcome to the Unexpectables. Welcome to the Unexpectables, everybody. Boy, oh. Episode 16. Yeah. This series can officially drive. Look out. We're rebels without a cause. Our permits mean shit. Which means we're just jackasses. No, no. Who caused problems on purpose. <laughs> that's, that's, what Gaijin, that's what Gaijin's plan is. Today, that that was that was my plan. Yeah. <laughs> See a goblin, it dies. <laughs> Obliterate. Alright. Connor, why don't you let us go with our introductions here? Let's do it. Gaijin Goomba, where can they find you and what are you up to? Uh I'm becoming older and uh Yay. I don't feel much different. Uh, my birthday was two days ago. Thank you for everyone to the nice wishes. Thank you for coming to the birthday stream yesterday. That shit was nuts. Um, you find me twitch.tv slash Gaijin Goomba every Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Yes, Central. Um, build streams and uh, this old indie game called Scrap Mechanic have dominated my life. Uh, I have not had fun with such a chill buildy game since Minecraft, and I would argue that it's actually better than Minecraft because Whoa. it has... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, inflammatory. You gotta be careful. No, no, I don't, because you can't build complicated machines in, on this level like you can in Minecraft. Also, there are guns, so Minecraft loses. Um, there are also kick-ass robots, so Minecraft loses. Um, can you also... literally build a working, functioning phone in Minecraft that can dial real people? How would you be able to do that without severely modding the game? Redstone is crazy, man. Yeah, How right. can you Just connect Redstone to a modem? Well, you're already on the They found a way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, if we're talking unmodded and not like galaxy braining here. Uh, it's fun. I, I literally I literally made a, a spinning top rocket ship. Don't ask how it works. I don't know how it works, but I've been playing a lot of that. I've been also been looking for a bunch of new uh, mech games because there's a lot out there that I just noticed like mass, M-A-S-S. -S. Um, so expect that and a whole lot of model building in the coming times. I am also technically off from making videos. It feels nice. amazing. <laughs> uh, I get a break. I get, uh, I get a break for the entire month. It feels great. Um, so yeah, I'll just probably be streaming more. Yay. Right on. Another year older, another year wiser. Uh, Mark Allen Jr., where can they find you and what are you up to? You can find me on Twitter.com at Mark Allen Jr. here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming. And you can follow the adventures of my fat sleepy cat bunny when she's not licking my toes on Instagram at Chonk for Life. We finished Sonic's route in Sonic 06 today, just before this stream, because we had a slight rescheduling happen. 
uh, we did it. We sang the In His World song, and then we, we sang the real In His World song, Zebra Head Aversion, which is significantly better. Don't at me. And um, yeah, it was a good time. Uh, I only raged a little bit. Um, don't <laughs> quote me on that, uh, but it's true. Um, I will not be streaming tomorrow. I will try and stream on Saturday. Um, this next couple of weeks is going to be a little weird. Um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff right now, and then next week I'm going on a vacation for five days. Uh, so lots of crazy things going on, but do follow my Twitter. Uh, I update that frequently, so if you're curious at all about what's going on with me, that's the place to check. Right on. Uh, Zito, where can they find you, and what are you up to? Twitch.tv slash Zito and uh, CZ Backlash on Twitter. Uh, I am going to be streaming a a big batch of Sage demos on Friday, and then if I feel like it, uh, I'm going to restart a run on Curse to Golf because I, I choked on the final boss and I fucking got so mad. <laughs> I got oh. so you got so I, tilted. You're doing the game again. Yeah, I I molded so hard. I got to fuck. I restarted the whole run. I'm like, no, I could do this better. Damn. <laughs> I'll show you game. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, about my comic that I'm working on is out. Please go support it. You know, I'm just gonna go post my card because it has all of the things that I'm doing in one easy location. Uh, yeah, that night box thing miss tweetums it's broken because it's no longer the ever ink almanac it's now zito is neato so that that's why i'm like here's the card instead whoa whoa uh that's happening uh the uh, aloysius is kind of social acceptance too if you want to keep on uh up to date on that please check out my twitter because i talk about that on there nonstop. I'm in the throes of getting the last bits of artwork, uh, the cover, and like three more uh, bits of artwork, and then I can finish up the lore and possibly have more Spelljammer content for you to play with. Because who doesn't want to play as a tiny little penguin man? Why, why was that not allowed? Well, I, I'm just, that's stupid. You get to be a little penguin man now. I love penguins. Yes, and now I like you, and now you too can play as one thanks to Aloysius' guide to social acceptance too coming soon. I like when they go. They make All right, as well. they do. Their feathers are also crazy. Uh. Edward Bosco, where can they find you? And what are you up here, to? You can find me here. We are so over time, Monty. Where can they find you? You can find me at Monty Glue on, on Twitter. Uh, I'm sorry, Jesus. You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Thank you so much, everyone, who's been very, very uh, supportive about my persona. I thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are crazy and did art. So thank you. Um, you can also catch me on Twitch. Currently, we're doing Majora's Mask, and tomorrow will be uh, uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. We're back in the dungeon. We are back in it. <laughs> we're back into dungeon level three. Um, maybe some random streams throughout the week, but I've been very, very busy because I have been running a game on Saturday and I have to make terrain for it. But thank you guys so much for your support and I love you guys so much and that's for me. One of us. One of us. Uh, and they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil where I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, be sure to check out my DMs Guild where I release 5th edition subclasses including the Treasure Hunter Conclave for the Ranger, which I will get to working on as soon as I stop being so busy. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, with that, uh, did did Monty? Did you did you want to go first? Huh? With a with a thing. It's more of a shout out, if anything. Um, yeah. You're talking about you're talking about the link thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Someone might have I noticed guess... a new command in chat. P potentially, yes. Um, so, uh, just adds up. We are not sponsored. I have to say this clearly. We are not sponsored, but maybe one day we will be. Um, but I reached out to Griffin Saddlebag, which is a, uh, fifth edition supplement that you can add a bunch of 365 magical items to your D&D &D game. I bought this book last year. It's super great and has some really great shit in it. 
Uh, and through Joe Cat, I got into contact with Griffin Saddlebag asking if I could use some of their content for Unexpectables and other streams that we do. And they said it's cool as long as we give them a shout out. So if you guys want to check out the book, it's really, really good. And I really recommend it. And uh, thank you so much, Griffin Saddlebag, for letting me play with all the Legos. I appreciate it a lot. <laughs> I even said so. I'm like, you saying yes to this was like me giving the child a big box of Legos that they get to play with. So Yeah, yeah and they have a Kickstarter. They do. They have a Kickstarter going right now for, I think, Volume 2? Yep. Um, All of their stretch so. goals have been fulfilled. <laughs> yeah, it's a good book, so makes sense. But yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Griffin Saddlebag. You're not our sponsor, but you're letting us use your thing, and I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Yes. And I also, last couple episodes of, of Gateway and the Expectables were a bit dubious because we, we didn't have a code. But I can I can tell you with 100% certainty now that this episode is sponsored by Die Hard Dice. Die Ooh, Hard Dice! Back. Die Hard Dice is your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to DieHardDice.com, use the code UNEXPECTABLES. No exclamation point this time, just UNEXPECTABLES. You can save 10% on your order when you shop at DieHardDice.com. Yeah. And it's it's and our new fellow is is Todd, right? That's his name, Todd. Yes. I wish we had the other guy because his name was better. <laughs> it's more ironic, yeah, well, honestly. I, Todd, I think Todd is a great shout out. Todd is a great think, name, yeah. I think he actually Todd owns the company. Oh, Todd owns the company? Oh, no. No, Sorry. the other one. The other one owns the company? That's hilarious. Can we see what his name is? Because it's really funny. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's Alton. His name is Alton. <laughs> oh, he owns our region. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was completely coincidental, but his name is Alton, which is fantastic. So, just, talk about a small two, world. He just two Boy, scoops, isn't that a coincidence? two dice on top of us as we're walking over the overworld. <laughs> That's really awesome, though, that he owns our region and Todd Squad is represented by our new representative, Todd. Right? Yeah, we have like, Todd that's Squad. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, because of Nick and Todd. Yeah, we have, a, we yeah. have our new yep. Todd, who's a living, breathing person now. So, thank you, Todd. Very happy to work with you. Sorry if our chat sends weird messages when they buy dice. Like, like, how good can you cut? Oh no! Don't send that, please. Also, did, like... was it Todd or Nick that got sent into the into the Nether? I can't remember. I it might have been. I think it was Nick. I think it was I think Nick. Nick yeah. got pulled into the Nether realm. Yeah, he didn't get, so. only he didn't get sent to the Nether. He <laughs> got obliterated from existence. Yeah, he did. But this Todd is is the very real and very existent and He's very nice. So thank you so much, Todd. We we love you. All right. Oh, Todd is the owner. Oh no! Never mind. Thank you, Sorry. Todd. Wow. <laughs> This is a Sorry, roller coaster. I, I got it mixed up. It's <laughs> it's new people. It's not Di it's not Diana. I don't know what's happening. <sighs> God, we haven't even started playing yet. Yeah, we haven't. Right. This is gonna be a good Indeed. one. Indeed. Right. And there's another thing we have to get through for before we start playing. This is a business. Is. Uh, one sweet girl. Thank you for the ten months. Venmaro Cowers Corwin. Thank you for the sixteen months. Ben Franklin with his shirt off. Thank you for the sixteen <laughs> <What>? months. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> An acceptable name. Thank you for the twenty nine months. Jahail and Froggy's mom, thank you for the 30 months. Man, we've been doing this for a long time. King Cat Goblin, thank you for the 29 months. Earliest Bread, thank you for the 29 months. Dr. Quactopus, thank you for the 100 or for the 11 months of Prime. Uh, Cup of Squid, thank you for the 25 months of Prime. Mythical Things, thank you for the 22 months. Uh, Mickey D92, thank you for the 29 months. King Night Owl, thank you for the 23 months. Alucard True V, thank you for gifting a sub. Gladius Moonrise, thank you for the five months of Prime. Mr. Snacks, thank you for the 15 months uh, tier one. Dice Ruler, thank you for the 18 months. Dark Lord Popo, thank you for the 23 months. Z the Mediocre, thank you for the 29 months of Prime. Robo Mom, thank you for the five bits. Zen Leader, thank you for the 100 bits. Mikan Pachi, thank you for the five bits, or the five months, rather. Zbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbzbz
thank you for the nine months. Common Striders, thank you for the 100 bits. King Cat Goblin, thank you for gifting three subs to the community. Mutron9, thank you for the 25 months of Prime. That rhymed. So did that. D Dr. Dead Inside, thank you for the 100 bits. Dragosoon, thank you for the 23 months. The Atom Bomb, thank you for the 10 or the 100 bits. Fat Spartan, thank you for the 12 months. Super Blue Hedgehog, thank you for the 182 bits. Protoss 103, thank you for the 5 bits. Bubba Bob, thank you for the 500 bits. Papusa Monkey, thank you for the 100 bits. Protoss 103, thank you for the 5 bits. More Thrandor, thank you for the 100 bits. Aurelius, thank you for the 14 months. Akazar, thank you for the 500 bits. Killer Knight, thank you for the 5 months of Prime. Mud Martin, thank you for the 28 months of Prime. The Goblet of Fun Making, thank you for the 29 months. Bill MSU, thank you for the gifted sub. Proto Saber, thank you for the 19 months. Quietus Riotus, thank you for the 100 or for the 10 bits. Crabius the Great Crabber, thank you for the 100 bits. Revengerist, thank you for the 21 months of Prime Subage. The Corpo Aviation Center, thank you for the 100 bits. And Rexasaurus, thank you for the 12 months. Wow, you did that really fast. Holy Hannah. I I'm did. Still the intro, but that's okay. We can get started. Yeah. Oh my god. Is it intro time? I think it's intro time. <gasps> you know what that means, kids. Get ready. Here we go in three, two, one. When last we left our adventurers, Otho Valentinius, Kai Valentinius, Iskan Seat Lolly, Milo Brightbeam, and Gaius Agni, the party has presented themselves to the Ocean Lords of Martorallo in hopes of charting a nimble boat to seek out the sunken remains of the Hesper's Wake, a vessel that was smashed at sea upon the Sea Dragon's bones. After meeting with Coleco, the Three Cretan Merchant Lord, Winona the Wild Cannon Sorcerer, and Gusfrin Tipperbottom, the Forehead Champion of the Triton, they mulled over their options, and the party determined that Winona was the preferred avenue of travel. And now, as we return to the Unexpectables, we watch as the party make their way to meet up with their new hiree, with a mysterious treasure-seeking ahead of them. I mean, I'm down to just beeline it. <laughs> Everybody's still muted. Well, we no, were waiting because I'm here. I wanted to make sure Monty didn't put on the baby by accident. Yeah, I didn't. Oh. I made sure. Baby. Just Gaius looks at the kid and just like stare, glares at him. And the kid clams up. <laughs> so, in the early morning, you guys make your way down to the beach. Um, surprisingly quieter. Um, and notably, there's a lot of ships not there. Um, it seems like the early morning is a key fishing time for the people of Martorallo. 
but there are still crowds moving about people selling you know early morning food food stalls now opening up for the wayward travelers and sailors on their way to sea and as you guys make your way through the crowds you eventually find yourselves uh on the beginning of the dock that leads to Winona's fairy woman. Well, hey there again. Well, hello there. Good morning. Yeah, the weather hasn't changed, has it? It's actually quite nice, yeah. Oh, okay. Couldn't tell. You don't have to roll during <laughs> cities. I determine the weather in cities, so. Gotcha. Okay. God yeah. chooses how the I city am the one who <laughs> Well, I guess we're heading back to talk with Miss Odez. No, you're not. You're we, heading we had... to a sailing oh. vessel. Okay, sorry. I'm above game. I'm confused. Are we going to, <laughs> we, to uh, finalize things? or We no, had so... a message sent. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's all good. You were you were getting lost in the ham in the dinner because it was <laughs> man was it good. I just lost can't wait to ham. set a skeleton on fire. Then you're also doing about violence. Wait, got gu a mace cocked and loaded. <laughs> just checking your ship here. Uh, the fairy woman kind of points out, and you can see now a vessel flying the colors of Winona Odez in the ocean, a significantly smaller vessel. Uh, Otho and Kai, you would know this to be just a simple sailing ship. Is it a clipper? I don't know what that is, so I'm just going to say it's a sailing ship, ah, because that's what the wait, stats they, are for. Winona As opposed to a ship that doesn't a, sail. They said it was a sloot. That's what, you're trying, that's what you're trying to get from her. That yeah. is not what she said oh, that's you're what traveling on. Is it smaller than that or larger than that? It's wider, I would say. It's it's about the same size, but it's a little less like maneuverable. It seems a little bit wider and stockier. I'm going to picture it as a clipper then. Yeah, yeah I, I'm getting a clipper at this point. That's fine. You may you interpret it, the sailing ship as you will. I am using the sailing ship stats from Salt Marsh, so thumbs up. Oh, well, that's going to be a... <laughs> <laughs> Great, five sailing mechanics. Here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, as you get onto the ferry vessel and make your way out, the water is crystalline blue. You see, um, specifically for you, Milo, and you, Gaius, a strange fish kind of coasting in the water. It's more like a triangular shape to it with a long, thin tail that runs behind it, kind of just sort of gently coasting above the sand as you begin to make your way on the sail ship over to the the keeler. Was that what you said? And uh, as you yeah, as you arrive, the boat is kind of linked up next to the ship, but it's very easy to climb onto the side of this vessel compared to the large galleon that Winona is regularly on. Uh, and as you guys arrive, you see immediately rushing to your side. Um, a rather <laughs> stereotypical striped shirt looking pirate with a bandana tied behind his head. He's got kind of like um, very light blonde hair, but dark tan skin with kind of a goatee beard kind of going on. Uh, both of his ears are pierced with these long kind of hoop earrings. Uh, and as you kind of arrive, he kind of pulls the vessel as the sail is dropped and kind of gives a salute to the fairy woman and goes... Hi, it is so nice to meet everyone. Uh, welcome aboard my boat. I'm Polite Pete. This is my boat. Come, I after you, please come aboard. <laughs> oh my god, I bet you he's neither polite nor is he Pete. Yeah, I, I was fucking love the idea of a pirate being just hello. <laughs> I'm a nice <laughs> guy. <laughs> I was about to say nothing in particular, but Marty, I just want to see if he's full of shit. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Give him the no, famous I, Gaijin I, I... insight. Also, I'm gonna click over to yeah, with my big I nine, because I still can't roll above a ten. Oh, fuck it, I want to try too. I, I, I want to know more. I must okay. know more of this polite Pete. It's actually good, or rather, correct that my insights have all been shit, because Milo's naive as hell. Oh. Ten. <laughs> well, the good news is, if it beats, it beats. You get the sense that he is genuinely nice, but there's a certain twitch at the corner of his mouth that kind of suggests there's more at play. 
but uh, you don't feel threatened with something is clearly not 100% with this person. Oh, um, oh hmm. no. Like, Ga Gaius doesn't change his expression. He's just smiling at the fact that he's just like, oh, Pyrus lying to us just like in the Whoa. stories. Ah, <laughs> uh, Captain Winona, your um, crew is here. And you can see currently up standing in the crow's nest, kind of staring out is Winona currently. And she kind of looks goes, Oh, that's nice. And she kind of looks back out to the ocean. <laughs> oh, I, uh, vigilant. I didn't realize she'd be coming with us. Why wouldn't I? N no reason. I just, I didn't, I didn't know. Do you want me to leave? I can leave. I didn't realize this would be such an issue. No, no, that's not what we meant. It, we're actually very happy and surprised to see you here in, a, in the best way possible. Yeah, golden hair over there is, but I don't know about blue over here, huh? I'm not unhappy to see you. It's just a surprise. I figured uh, Gaius, you have more Gaius takes both his fingers. Gaius takes both of his fingers, uh, uh, like near the corner of Iskan's mouth, and makes it look like he's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, fine. I'll... I am. I am very scared that he's going to bite my fingers off. Please tell me this is a good enough smile. <laughs> All right, it's good enough. Welcome aboard. Get on. Hurry. What I don't bite your fingers. Trust me, I didn't want to do it either. <laughs> Welcome aboard the Motorola Sunrise. This is a uh, polite Pete's boat. Hello. Get polite to know Pete. him because if you end up doing this job to my satisfaction, he will also be the one who will be manning, manning your sloop. And polite Pete goes like, and it'd be an honor to do so. I, I must say, I'm just so happy to meet all of you. You you are all you all look great, especially like all of you. Just you look great, and I'm happy to have you aboard. And I hope I hope we all get to know each other really well, and you're all comfortable and have a nice time. The anime sweat drop droops. <laughs> This guy is giving me Barney customer the service vibes. mode activated. Yeah, for real. It's like no one who smiles that it, much is actually this, happy. This is a fucking Fallout character. <laughs> 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 this is Yes Man times a ten. Oh God. All right. Well, if there's no further ado, Winona says as she kind of begins to make her way down the crow's nest. All right, everyone, start manning the rigging. And you watch as she kind of cracks her knuckles and she just kind of holds herself for a moment. And like you immediately feel from your backs just wind rush forward and it catches the sails as all the sailors kind of scamper around the deck of the ship and the boat begins to push forward. That's amazing. <laughs> Nothing really amazing about it. Speak for yourself. Guys, it's like looking over the side of the, the, sh the boat, just like... Ugh. Yeah, it's kicking up wake in its movement, and Winona kind of stands and just kind of seems to be just enjoying herself, and you see her just kind of sigh and goes, God, I love it when we're moving. I hate sitting around. All right, oh. well. Yeah, no, go ahead, Shorty. What do you got? I was just going to say, how long is this voyage going to be? Well, based on the information I was given, about a day. So, a day tomorrow, and then probably the following midday, we should make it there. If you want, I could try to catch us something. I I've heard you like your fish completely raw. I do, but I don't have my chef with me, so cooked would be better this time. Milo looks a oh, little insulted. Damn. <laughs> oh, damn. I mean... I'm not a terrible chef. I, I, I don't forget to scale the fish all the time. I don't think that's quite what she means. There is still a specific way that you have to prepare raw fish. Eating raw things generally is... Uh, unwise. I mean, I, I've never had a problem with it. Oh, really? Well, for some people of... <laughs> Some people have higher constitution than others. Looks in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> in my, in my... 
I get it. I but Constitution's my dubstep, Connor. Shut up. Uh, I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> just above game money, if if there's an opportunity to fish for some some sure yeah free food, I'd I'd be down. All right. Go ahead and roll for me a fishing tackle check, so like a wisdom check. Yeah, it should just be plus four. Ooh, 19. Fish. Okay. As you fish off the side of the boat, uh, Winona mostly stays in the crow's nest kind of to herself. Um, and the rest of the crew seems just like a regular kind of crew. Um, a few humans, a couple dwarves, um, a couple of uh, triton as well. And the helmsman is is polite Pete. He seems to be kind of manning, you know, second in command while Winona, Winona is just kind of vibing. Is the crewmate that I uh, conked in the head with my boomerang part of the sailing crew? Uh, no, he is not okay. present. That was the cabin boy. Uh, and there doesn't appear to be a cabin boy on this vessel at all. Gotcha. Um, but as you continue sailing, Milo, uh -huh. you feel your fishing rod become taut. Oh! And you then your feet kind of drag on the ground. Whoa. <laughs> and I need you to make an athletics check because you've caught something real big. Can he uh, be assist? Someone give yeah. me some help! Uh, 19. 19. All right. I imagine, Iskan, you run over and kind of help Milo as he's almost getting dragged off the ship. Also, Biggin! As you kind of pull and eventually reel it in, bursting out from the water just splashing into the air, the air is a relatively decent sized grouper um, about the same size as you and <laughs> as you kind of continue to struggle with it eventually you manage to just pull it up and a bunch of the sailors actually run over and help and they kind of run and grab and one of them grabs actually like a stick with a hook at the end of it and kind of reaches over grabs the fish and drags it onto the boat and it begins to like thrash around violently and one of the sailors goes, well, hurry up and kill it before it breaks someone's leg. Punch. Uh. All right, guys, you teleport in there and you just- Falcone! Punch. It's the don't fucking punch it. special. Don't, don't Catch. punch it off the ship, though. Catch this overhead fish. <laughs> you too. <laughs> nice. You, 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 you immediately, like, concuss the fish, and the fish immediately is still and is dead. Oh, that was a bit of an adventure. <laughs> Boy, I have very rarely seen a fish of this size. That was such a big end. Oh, wow. Oh, Iskan, thank you. I, I might have gotten pulled over if you hadn't helped me. Uh, yeah, no, uh, no problem. Well, I guess we're going to eat good today. All right. Go ahead, Milo, and make a cooking check for me. They actually do have, like, a little charcoal grill uh, oh, that nice. they pack with them. Yeah, so you can, like, grill it. There's, like, three oh, of them for the please, crew. Please, please, 16. Oh. Nice. As you, for the night, as kind of the, the sailing goes without a hitch, and the other thing which is very interesting is you guys are going, like, as fast as possible oh. with Winona's assistance. Um, as you guys prepare the meals, the sailors kind of sit down, pull out court, you know, pull out bottles of, of very, very strong alcohol. Uh, and you guys grill up the fish with various spices and salts. Uh, it's smoky and delicious and kind of crumbles, though it is a bit bony at times. Um, but, uh, as you kind of sit there and enjoy a drink, you do watch as the doors to the, um, the hold actually open up. And you see two very strong looking individuals, one that appears to be a hammerhead shark triton uh, wearing like full leather armor um, and flanking him is a, uh, a minotaur. And between the two of them, you see in manacles is a uh, human man with red hair that just kind of like flows back into like a ponytail, red scruffy beard and kind of a disheveled looking sort of admiral's jacket and pants. Uh, and as he's brought out, he's sat down and he is fed. Also, Connor, you're making some noises into your microphone, please. Uh, beware. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, uh, I think it's safe to say that's probably Red Jesse. Polite Pete, can't take the boat, goes, yeah, that is uh, Red Jesse. Uh, why, why is he locked up? Well, because he attacked Winona's friend. Right. Uh, 
I... Yes, remember he he shot him. Uh, no, with... I, I I got it. I just I don't know the way it was described. I thought it was more like I don't know. Well, who's hungry? <laughs> <Keep eating. laughs> I would could you please give me some more Milo polite pizzas? Do we have enough fish for that? Yeah. Oh, there's tons. It's a huge fish. Okay. okay so we'll make sure. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Everybody, get your fill. We're gonna need our energy, definitely. Okay. As you guys eat for the night, drink for the night. The alcohol is not refined. It is very much like you know sailors' food. Grog. grog. I sailors' I'll... grog. Yeah. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have. I'll try it. I will have water. Uh, notably, Winona does not join in the eating. She stays up on the crow's nest and kind of just seems kind of aloof. The wind is my sustenance. I mean, that's fine if she wants to vibe. Yeah, she <laughs> wants to vibe, it seems. I, uh, I but as night comes... Osmosis. <laughs> I'd photosynthesize the energy. <laughs> <laughs> but as the night comes to a close, you watch as the sun sinks b behind the sky... Uh, and it is a beautiful crimson red and pink hued sky over the ocean, almost cutting through the water like a beam of light. It is gorgeous. A few seagulls kind of stick along with the ship, kind of going for the scraps that were left behind from butchering the, the grouper fish. And as you guys head to bed, there are, um, your accommodations are either floor bedrolls or the netted hammocks that you you tend to see sailors sleeping on is your choice i just jumps in the fucking hammock all right you jump into the hammock yeah i'll get in the hammock too notably in the back of the ship there appears to be some other rooms and there appears to be one section that is a brig essentially and you can currently see sleeping on a cot is red jesse at the moment i will take a floor mattress Bedroll, whatever. You got it. Also take a floor mattress. I don't trust those those hammocks. <laughs> I think Kai. Uh, Kai is gonna sleep on the deck under the sails. Okay. And then Milo. Oh, I I said I was gonna get in the uh, net hammock. Okay. You guys all sleep for the night. Kai, as you're asleep on the deck, you feel something hit your face. Like violently or like the wind? Like wet. Gross. Uh, please explain further. You feel spray on your face. That didn't help at all and can be misconstrued quite easily. Uh, I'd like to see what the hell you're describing. You see currently, like, kind of crouching with her knees kind of into her chest, staring over you is Winona, just kind of raising an eyebrow. And you can see above you is a little tiny little itty bitty cloud that is just gently sprinkling tiny rain on top of you. Good morning. It's not morning. Are you sprinkling water on my face? Yeah. Is there a particular reason? I just thought it'd be funny. I mean, it would be if it wasn't me. I'd laugh too. But I was Why are you sleep? sleep? Why are you sleeping on the goddamn deck? Because that's what pirates do. They sleep on decks and they like sing in the ocean's breeze and to drink and you know, just take it in the atmosphere. Well, one, we're not pirates. Two, that's not at all how it works. And three, well, I don't have a third thing. Sorry, was I not supposed to sleep on the deck? I just figured you'd want to sleep with your friends. Honestly, the silence is kind of nice. Yeah, I guess it is. She kind of looks out to the sea. I mean, have you ever just fallen asleep listening to the sea or 
rain or thunderstorms. I can't fall cool. asleep without it. There you go. It's really relaxing. <sighs> she stands up. Be right back. And she kind of walks away. Hey, Winona? What? Are you okay? Yeah, kind of. So you're not, but I also don't want a prize, so if you don't want to talk about it, you know, it's fine. I'm sorry, are you trying to get me to talk about my feelings? No, I, that, I specifically said if you don't want to, listen, I'm in the same boat, literally and figuratively. If you don't want to talk about it, I'm not going to push. I'm just throwing the offer out there. Aw, do you care about me or something? I'm just saying I'm willing to lend an ear if you want to. If not, no big deal. <laughs> Be right back. You watch as he walks into like the lower part of the ship. Eventually she emerges and she throws something at you. Uh, can, do, do I catch it or does she throw it yeah. at my face? You want to catch it, I, you I, grab it. It's okay, a pillow. Well, oh, good. Uh, she kind of looks to you and goes, they butchered a fish on the deck and your hair seems very absorbent. So maybe a buffer. Yeah, they did. Wait, they, what? <laughs> but that was on the other side. Of the, that was on the, the, the bow. I don't, all right. Hey, water travels. And water okay. is a vehicle as well. Can't you just like clean the deck with some water? Why don't I clean the deck with some water? Ooh, that's a great idea. And she turns around and goes back up the, the crow's nest. You know, honestly, that went better than I thought. I figured you'd just like make a whole tidal wave crash on me. So thanks. Still tempting. Line... No, no. The punchline was better without it. Really hysterical. Go to sleep or I'll change my mind. I want to sleep. You mm. go back to sleep. Okay. You get a pillow. Which means you don't get a point of exhaustion. Hooray. And morning comes. Uh, you know, uh, above game money, I'm curious. Were we going to be provided any provisions, or is that all on our own? That's all on your own. You're going to be fed. I mean, you just fed the crew, so right. you're covered for that. But everything else is your own. Oh, no, no, I, I get that. I just didn't know if I needed to try to fish for breakfast. I get the punch here. Can I help? <laughs> I mean, I, that that's fine with me, guys. Um, is that cool money? I, I didn't want to... Yeah, it's early morning, so if you want to fish, you get up and you kind of go to fish. I, oh, I require a trial. There's nothing to do on this ship. Money, can I guidance this, or is it too ongoing? It's a long-term thing, okay. yeah. Fishing takes a while, so unfortunately yeah. you cannot. 22. 22. I All right. I just caught a whale. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> and then an abolith shows. <laughs> you catch I'm... a, not huge, but a reasonably sized tuna. Ooh, oh, shit. Those can go for a... Uh... Oh, I'm going to uppercut the shit out of him as he hits Pretty the deck. penny, yeah. Probably uh, like a... Probably like a, I'd say like a eight to ten kilogram tuna. Holy Jeez, shit! That's what is that in freedom units? Oh. That's in freedom units. Well, no, that's in. What would that be in pounds? I don't know. Fuck it's you. It's just like tw <laughs> 20, 20, <laughs> 20, 20, 20 pounds. Just yeah, twenty pounds. Twenty pound fish. Yeah. I'll Notably, try... and you would have you would have noticed this through the entire voyage. You are not going out into deep sea. You've actually been following the coastline, not closely, but you've always been able to see it to your left right. every time. Or sorry, rather, the port side of the ship, excuse me. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. As you've been traveling. All right, guys, I got it. All to wiggling. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Wow, right, wake guys? up level one uppercut. Yep. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh my god. You karate chop its head off. Like, perfectly. Zeno, did you did you wake up today thinking, man, I'm gonna punch a fish's head off in D&D? &D. <laughs> well, I mean, I could, I could have said the easy one and said I pounded it. Oh. Uh, as you guys serve up, what do you make with the tuna? Gadget? What, do they, what do they- do they have anything extra, like, vegetables, fruits? Yes, they do. For this for this vessel, absolutely, so, because this is a short short travel vessel. Do they have do they have bread or breadcrumbs? 
They do, yes. Oh, I'm gonna fry this bitch. All right, um, you fry the tuna. They, if they got, if they got oil, we probably don't have any eggs to, uh, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to. Oh, do we have eggs? Mm-hmm. Oh hell yeah, we're we're yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna make some punko fish. Uh, so basically, it's cut up into uh, kind of flanks, like every individual person can have one. It is covered in flour, dipped in egg, and then rolled around in breadcrumbs. Uh, and then, I guess in lieu of pan frying, because I don't think we're gonna have a pan like that. It's I'll just grill it. You can pan fry it. The the pan can go on top of the the charcoal oh, grills that that's they have right. set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, everybody's gonna get a nice flaky hunk of fish. Oh yeah, nice. With a nice lemon twist. Okay, wow. you guys. Man. It is it is flaky and crisp on the outside. Actually, roll your check to see how. Well oh this right, goes. I gotta I gotta cook this thing. You gotta you actually have to cook <laughs> no, it. No, it's all raw. <laughs> uh, twelve, okay. so probably average. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's crispy on the outside. It's a little hot in the middle. Um, the slices might have been a little bit too thick, but it was a very big fish. Um, but everyone seems to very much enjoy it. They seem very appreciative. And you actually notice and uh, that Winona is not anywhere to be seen. Um, but you do notice her kind of crawling out from where the figurehead of the ship is. Kind of oh. leery-eyed, rubbing her eyes. And she walks over towards what you're making and leans and hovers above you going, What is that? Also, flaky fried fish. Do you want to give it a taste? Uh, she reaches over and takes it. And like... Imagine a person biting into a rock and how they their face would make like a as she crunches into it, you see her kind of despise the texture, but she kind of chews it and she goes, yeah. she kind of starts to peel off the crumbing and just starts eating the cooked fish instead. And she goes, pretty good, I guess. She, she sideshow bobs when he gets hit with the face with the rake. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was gonna say Iskan is kind of a, a similar nature where he trusts your cooking and so he tries it as is, but you can tell that he is secretly kind of like peeling off the skin to just eat the fish meat. Oh that's like fine. a banana. That's fine more for me than <laughs> No, I, not I, like a banana. He's not <laughs> just, just holding a hunk of upright. meat and peeling it. Just holding it upright <laughs> with pinky out or like like pinky out just pulling the strips down. <laughs> Oh, that's the worst mental image. <laughs> Screw it, I'll, I'll, I'll eat the, I'll eat the breading you, if they you, don't you want peel it. it. You, you yeah. peel it like a banana and then bite it from the side. <laughs> you to. Yeah. If everyone is eating, does that mean the lines are free? The lines are free? No, there's people still working the rigging. They kind of switch off in shifts. You notice that at night, too, they also switch off. Can Kai take a shift? Sure, yeah. Go ahead for me and, oh gosh, what would this be? You tell me. Oh boy. Uh nope, not crashing a ship. That's not what we want. <laughs> sorry, Are you sure? Roll roll for nautical nonsense. <laughs> if that be something you wish. Uh... Can't fluff like a fish, it's dead. Guys uppercutted it. <laughs> I, I I fucking destroyed it. I destroyed its life. The fish was flopping and then it dropped on the deck. Hmm, okay. Um, I will say for for you, if you want to manage the... May, roll a strength check for me. Strength? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> strength. Strength. It's a two. Okay. Wow! It's a fast-paced ship, um, but a lot of it requires a lot of strength, mostly, and as you pull, you are helping, um, but you definitely are a bit dwarfed in comparison to like the the absolutely built dwarves that are just squares with muscles who are pulling at the rigging and the roping but they seem to be enthusiastic and supportive um unfortunately the check does not succeed um which means you do not assist with helping uh organize the rigging but it's fine you help anyway and keep yourself busy as you see the minotaur kind of exit out from the brig they kind of wave down uh winona winona kind of rubs her eyes and walks over and you can see the two of them kind of in discussion. And then Winona turns to you and goes, We're getting close. Oh, good. I'm so ready. And the Minotaur hands her a piece of paper. And she reveals where you're heading. Oh, so oh, sick. I was wondering about I'm that. I'm guessing it's to the west. But it can't be because the coast is on our port side, which means we're going east. I'm very confused. There it is. Yep. 
<laughs> wow, Mark. No, I, it was like one of those things where I was like, ooh, yeah, more map to the west. And then I was like, wait, no, she specifically said it was on the that left side. That makes no sense. <laughs> so you guys have traveled quite a way on boat. Boats are very quick. Um, as you begin to move forward, Winona kind of turns to you and hands you, uh, you specifically, E-Scan, uh, a little bit of a map. And she points out and she says... Red Jesse says that this treasure is hidden behind Follow Float Falls. Do we know what this treasure is supposed to look like? Not a clue. It's just some potential magic items, I believe. Something of a dungeon, he said, but his details were less than ideal. What oh. makes this rather difficult, though, is that if this is behind Follow Float Falls, we cannot bring the ship through, and we cannot bring a rowboat through either. It'll absolutely scuttle both. Money really quick. Uh, for, yep. breakfast, for breakfast, I want to do the temp HP for myself and guys. You got it. Okay, sorry. Cool. I eat so, the whole fish's head. <laughs> so we're looking for a cave behind the waterfall? I assume. That's what he sounds like is what he's telling me. He claims that he heard about this rumor over a few drinks with some people in uh, the dark docks, essentially. The shade docks. Hmm. Uh, so Iskan will pull out his map that previously had Osasir and Point Prim on it from earlier conversations. Um, and he's kind of outlining the river uh, to show her. Uh, so about how far up is this falls? Uh, we'll probably get there in maybe 30 to an hour minutes, maybe. It, is it is it very far inland, or is it right no. on the coast? It's right on the coast. It's sheer rock cliff and then the waterfall cutting right through. Oh, wow. Hmm. Isn't that kind know. of unusual? A waterfall? Well, directly into the ocean. Not really. Seems pretty normal, I think. Well, but uh, never mind. It's probably not important. If you're concerned about why the erosion of the water hasn't cut through the rock, the rock of Martorallo is rather. What's the word? Hard, but like a lot? Dense? Dense? Yeah, durable, dense. So like, Hard to get through. So there's, like, no clay? Not to my knowledge, no. Uh, you would know. You're the dirt expert, it seems. Uh, n no, not, not... Not really, no. Uh, sorry, I just... It just... It's interesting, that's all. <laughs> when we get there, I can cut a path through, but you're gonna have to swim through, and once I cut it down, well, you're gonna have to take it from there. Sounds fine by me. Good. All right. Let's keep moving. And he watches the men kind of keep pulling the rigging. And, and Kai, you're trying to keep up with them. As you turn the corner, you hear the follow float falls before you see it. The sound of water on water, a crashing rumble that shakes the surface giving wake over the boat. Even though it's been smooth sailing uh, for this entire venture, this is where the water becomes choppy and a bit um, disturbed. And as you turn to your left, you do see a large sheet of white and blue cutting down the rock, a rather wide, probably, I want to say, oh God, how wide would it be? Probably 150 feet wide waterfall. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, crashing over, and Winona points it out. You guys will see Iskan furiously scrawling uh, and a mark at this point on his map with, like, arrows and side notes and everything kind of indicating this is a pretty noticeable feature. Mm -hmm. um, something that many might consider a landmark. Mark, you really need to stop chasing waterfalls. Okay, I'll try and stick to the rivers and lakes I'm used to. I appreciate that. 
Lord have mercy. Winona oh. walks over and they begin to unload a rowboat into the water. Uh, is it just... Are there any, like, um cliffs or any extensions coming from the sides like going into the waterfall or is it literally just sheer rock wall then waterfall then waterfall yep mm, okay well <laughs> go ahead could i have visited red jesse real quick sure if you wish to speak with him absolutely yeah i'll just go over to the brig and i'll i'll lean into the cage and in thieves can't I'm going to tell him, what's the over-under on this being a wash? I'm basically asking him, what are the odds of uh, this being legitimate? The eggplant is the one who ferrets in the dark. What are you saying to me? Never mind. Who are you? What did you, what? He seems really confused by what you just said to him. And I'm gone. And you leave, <laughs> leaving him very confused. My work here is done. Caves. But you didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, it seems crazy. he doesn't understand thieves can't. Okay, that told me everything I need to know. As you kind of exit out to the uh, deck of the ship, Winona turns and goes, there you are, finally. Come on, everyone get aboard. Hopping on in. Get in there. Okay. Polite I Pete takes up. small boats significantly less than I do this bigger boat. Oh, but yeah. When you, when you get in, it is jostling. This would be hell for someone who has hoop. <laughs> <laughs> Just slips into the ocean. No, just like fucking face plant into the into the ship. <laughs> Winona kind of gets on board and seems very at place on the rocky boat. And polite Pete also kind of gets on. He's like, "Oh, excuse me, pardon me. Just gotta scooch on by there. I'm so sorry. All right, I'm in the back. I'm good to go." Uh, and notably, there are no paddles, and the boat just begins to move on its own towards the waterfall being kind of bounced around and, and bumped and hucked every way, uh, this way and that. And as you approach the waterfall, uh, Winona stands up on the front of the ship and you watch as she kind of brings her hands forward and almost does like a parting motion with her fingers kind of grip. And you can see her kind of like her arms tense. And you watch as their, the waterfall begins to split in two almost like a sheet or a finger is now kind of poking in the center of it, breaching the water on the left and right side. And as she kind of holds it, she goes, now you need to go now. Holy crap. All right, let's oh, go, okay. go, go, go. Okay. Give me a single when you return, okay? No problem. Will do. And as you all push into the water, uh, Milo, you're wearing heavy armor. So what are you doing? Uh, drowning, apparently. I will grab him. Okay, you grab Milo and shoulder Milo. Uh, Milo, you're on top of uh, uh, Gaius. And Gaius, you have, a, you have a good strength score, so it's not that bad. As not you... I hope I do. Well, really quick, Monty, um, what 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 would the strength balance be? I don't know anything about, like, fifth ed swimming. Not really. I know 3-5, and that's about it. So what would the ruling be? Yeah, we don't actually athletic. have a swim stat. <laughs> I, I, you I, do actually skill, i think skill rather actually, well i mean that's why i'm asking you do. yeah we do what? that's crazy I, i've only just ever run you it on you do yeah you're you're a lizard folk you have a swim speed oh right oh right swim why speed. right yeah what? are you sure yeah yes. i know i can yes. breathe for for 15 minutes but i didn't see anything about a swim speed you should have it though i know that you were using the earlier one also i gotta go grab my dms guide give me one second here okay sorry yeah, are you are are you modem or are you uh oh, I do base? have a swim speed. Yeah. Oh. I missed that part. I I was mostly saying there is no skill for swim, because in 3-5 there's literally a swim skill. But yeah. And now I know I have a yeah. swim speed. Yeah, well, there's swim that... speed and then just athletics. Where would that so go in, on the D? In water. Mm-hmm. In water, you guys your guys it's technically difficult terrain, so all of your movement is had unless you have a swim speed, which Eastcan does have. 
I don't fine. need to swim. I'll just run across this. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> oh god, where's underwater combat? Oh lord. We might have to just leave this for now because this book is very That's... hard. Yeah. I... That's it's fine. not if, listed here. I'll find it later. If it matters, Monty, I'm technically wearing medium armor, not heavy. Okay, that does help, yeah. You're fine, yeah. but you're still probably gonna need a little bit of help, because you are yeah. kind of... You also have pots and pans and other fun things on it's you. Like, it's like <laughs> Samwise Gamgee trying to crawl out to Frodo and starts drowning. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> Gotta come swim, Mr. Frodo! Oh! <laughs> but as you swim through the waterfall, you watch as you kind of make your way forward through this curtain. You watch as the curtain behind you then closes and it becomes eerily dark. Not completely dark, it's dim light now. Um, but the thundering waterfall behind you kind of echoes across. And the waterfall itself kind of pushes you all forward. Uh, and you all see a ledge, like a, a shelf of rock that you guys can steady yourselves on. Let's go. Uh, and I will just point, since now I know I have a swim speed, uh, <laughs> anyone who looks like they may be struggling, Iskan will be taking the time to help everybody up before he comes up himself. Thank you. You got it. And as you all stand on the shelf rock, you smell the scent of salty spray, and there's like these kind of divots in the rock where there are puddles formed with a bit of, you know, urchins and sea stars and all manner of other critters have kind of made their way to it. Uh, but you also notice to the north what appears to be a square sheet of rock set into the wall. Hmm. And I will take us over to our map. <gasps> a map! Will we... <gasps> is, it, is it going to be difficult for people to see in here? It is dim light, so it's not difficult right now. Okay. That's just any, if anybody needs a light, just let me know. It's like maybe most of us. Wait, I have a hooded lantern. And uh, so you don't have to burn oil, I will poke it with the light spell. Fuck yeah. Shing! It is and now I... glowing light. That means I will take this lead. I will fall up the back. Uh, so what's going on with this, uh, flat, uh, stone? What languages do you know, Gaius? Haha, <laughs> all right. I know, uh, common, dwarvish, giant, and, uh, sylvan. Okay. There are two squares on this door. This door looks rather kind of worn. Um, definitely has been weathered quite a bit. Um, a, there's sort of like this cut rectangular inset in the, uh, in the, in this rock shelf or this door rather that has words in a language you can't understand. And below that is a longer, thinner kind of inset. And it feel, looks like it's filled with sand. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to take the, uh, the hilt of my ax and try to dig out the sand. All right, as you kind of put the hilt of your axe into the sand, you try and dig it out, but it almost kinetically returns back into place, but the mark you left with your axe hilt stays. Oh. What did you find, Mr. Agni? Well, there's a language I can't understand, but sand doesn't normally retract itself, does it? He points down to where he uh, made the cut. Not unless it's magnetic. Where do you uh, see the language? The oh, over here. Yeah. And I hold the lantern I'm, up to it. Kai, yeah, I'm gonna take, take a, a look. look. Okay. Yeah, what language well. is what languages does everybody know? Uh I know Abyssal Celestial Halfling in Common. Okay, you can't read it. Oh you know? I know I know oh, Go ahead. I know Common, Dwarvish, Elvish, Giant, Primordial, and Thieves Can't. You can't read it. I know Damn. Common, Draconic, Druidic, and Dwarvish. You can read it. Ooh. It is Draconic. Oh. And it reads, how many heads does a Hydra have? With a question mark at the end. Uh, Iskan will read the text out loud to everybody in common. Do we... Does... 
Is this, this, is this that language that only you could understand again? What? N no, that's... No, it's... this is draconic. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I see. Monty, do we need to brain blast to see if any of us know what the hell a Hydra is? You may discuss this above board, if you wish, to figure out what the puzzle is. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure it's it's seven, right? Well, until you cut one off. Yeah, that's the that's the thing. Infinite. <laughs> Ooh, but another way to read infinite is the sideways eight. Right. Ooh. But is there any is there Oh wait! We Etch it in the sand. Yeah. I'll... Yeah. Yeah. Can it, did, you... it did leave an etch, so do it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess Iskan will use a finger to put in an infinity symbol. Okay. You kind of put your finger in the sand and kind of roll it around the infinity symbol. You watch as the door then <laughs> opens up. Huh. Easy enough. Oh, Maybe well. too easy? Uh, hold the lantern ahead and step on just to here. All right. You see a very clean room. Um, you notice that in the ceiling are three large glass-like kind of pyramid shapes that point downwards. There are little holes kind of every, probably every six inches or so bored into the hole, maybe like half an inch wide. And in the center of the room is a pedestal with a golden button in the middle. And on the other side at the north end is a closed door. Would the door happen to have uh, text as well? Uh, you cannot tell from this distance. Well, if I walk up to it. You can walk up, you have to move your token though. Uh, I'm gonna etch along the side. Can I run a, a perception check to, like... Sure. Actually, no. Can I, like, duck away from where the holes are? Sure. They're on the walls, so they're bored into the walls, so... That's why I said duck, so, like, I can arch my way, not... So I don't get oh, in yeah. front of the holes. Oh, they're, my... like, ten feet up in the air, so they're quite high up. Okay. While, uh... Monty, can I just kind of take 10 while everyone does whatever so I can ritual cast detect magic? That is up to your party. Uh, well, we're not going to stop you. All right, just I need to find a safe place. I guess I'm going to stand Gaius. here and watch yeah. what happens to Gaius. <laughs> Gaius, as you look forward, uh, this door has no markings on it and no, like, handles or doorknobs or anything on it. It's just a flat stone door. Hmm. With Gaius, like, turns back. One yeah, Gaius it. turns back and shouts back to everyone. No text. Just a flat, just a blank door. Hmm. Yeah, just want to let me know when it goes off. I'm just going to be doing that. Yeah, it looks something up real fast. Here, yep, real fast. you good. You good. I just, hard to tell player-wise the passage of time. <laughs> All right, you cast your mm -hmm. detect magic. That's a thirty foot thing with from you, Let right? Let me give it a click. Thirty, yes. All right, I'm just gonna do this for my own ease. Boom. All right, you detect abjuration about every single one of those little holes has mm -hmm. abjuration tied to it. The button in the middle is conjuration. Oh dear. I, I think if we push that button, uh, something's gonna appear. Can you be more specific? Not really. If if you look, these holes over here, they, they've got abjuration magic tied to them. And I'm wondering if it's all tied together. Uh, Kai, do you have any idea what he's talking about? I mean, I know the schools of magic, right, Monty? You do, yeah. I mean, those are two types of schools of magic. The button in the middle is conjuration. I assume pressing it will summon something. Abjuration is typically defensive. That can be anything from a shield spell to, like, an alarm. 
so it's hard to tell unless you actually analyze the type of magic, see if there's any kind of inscriptions that tell you what kind of spell it is. But Conjuration's pretty straightforward. You press the button, something's showing up, hostile or not. Gaius holds a finger up over the button but doesn't, like, press down on it. He looks to everyone else. <laughs> what does this button do? No, that... See, that's why I had him look at everyone just like, do I do it? <laughs> I don't know. Um... That seems like it'd be too easy. Um... Is there anything... How high up are the holes, Monty? In the the walls? holes are ten feet high. Oh. I... I'm not sure. Can anyone look into the holes? Can anyone see inside? Uh, Try, if I stand on somebody's shoulders. Okay. If only we had somebody who could, like, jump really high and look in the holes, that'd be, like, perfect. <laughs> you would not be able to jump and look. You'd have to be steady to look, I think. Only we had somebody These are very small. These are very small holes, but, like, le smaller than, like, a ping pong ball. Like, who's, probably the size of a marble. Who's the Hold still, Mr. Agnate. Can I get over here? Let me stand on your shoulder. <laughs> oh, motherfucker. He's kind of technically taller if you count the ears, because you can stand on his ears. But that doesn't count. I mean, he doesn't... What are you talking about ears? He has yeah. ear holes. Yeah, He's you know, a the, lizard. The, the, flo the floppy things on your head face. <laughs> the <now>. ears. <laughs> Gaius, yeah. you lift up Otho. Otho, go ahead and roll a perception check for me with disadvantage. Perception with can disadvantage? I, I want to guidance him! Actually, no, 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 I don't, no, I don't, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, you lose concentration. Detect, yeah. yeah, I want to keep detect magic, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Oh. Bright Beam, wait, is the hole dark? Yeah. You have Mr. a lantern. Mr. Bright Beam, could you give me some light? Oh, yes. I, could. Oh, I hold the hand in the lantern. All right, hold the lantern up. Does that negate the disadvantage? Nope, because it's a very small hole. It's a very small hole. Gotcha. Perception with disadvantage? Let's do it to it. That is going to be a six either way. Wow. You try and peer in, but you're reaching that problem where if you put the light in front of it, like it lights up the hole, but if you put your face in front of it, it blocks the light and you can't see. Um, mm. So unfortunately you can't see anything, but you do smell something. Um, it's sort of like a alchemical smell. Oh God. It smells like a something that was synthesized. Like uh Almost like alcoholish, some something alchemical. Um, money? Can I do? Uh, screw it. Yeah, can I? Can I do an investigation around the pedestal? See if I can find like writings and switches, things, minute things like that. Sure. Okay. That insight. There we go. Never mind, that's three. It is a pedestal with a button on it. I will also Kai, investigate. are you going to stay out there or are you going to join everybody else? I mean, I'll stay right here, but I don't want this door to close on them, so I'm going to stay here. Okay. Thirteen. It is a pedestal with a button on it. Damn. <laughs> Wait a second, does the tech magic tell you just the type of magic, or yes. is there a way to identify the actual spell? Uh, No. Yeah. It just tells you what type of magic it is. Yeah, this is this isn't three five rules, unfortunately. Are there etchings on the wall or anything? Like anything that would give a hint as to what either abjuration or conjuration spell is active or prepped? Nope. They don't say Excellent. anything. Cool. I'm gonna you know it's folly, but fuck it. Yeah, it's folly. <laughs> it is a button that conjures something. The Should I just do an obligatory one just to get out of the way? <laughs> I mean I think we're pretty we're pretty certain it is a <laughs> is a button on a pedestal. Help it's me a button on a pedestal. It's, it's yep. definitely yep. going to be yep. a pressable button on is, a pedestal. Is there any magic along the uh, door, Monty? Uh, not that you can detect, no. Okay. I know I'm usually the cautious one, but I feel like in this instance, we don't really have a choice but to press it and pray. 
Yeah, I, I think that's... yeah. Well, hmm. I can press it and he can pray. Points to Violet. <laughs> yeah, fall and pray, baby. Here we go. Let's hope Oren's feeling generous. Click. <laughs> okay. As you click the button, the door immediately slams it. shut I behind you. Knew it. And this begins. A timer begins, and you watch as the lights, the glass on the ceiling begins to glow a more intensive red color. And you can hear a whirring coming through the walls. And that smell becomes a little bit more intense. Uh, you, okay. You smell is getting more powerful. You have three minutes. Figure it out. Um, has anything okay. changed since the button was pressed? Uh, the lights are now glowing in the glass ceiling. Uh, That's the only visible change? That is the only visible change, and the smell is intensifying. Do they reflect any light in a sort of pattern? Uh, they seem to be slowly growing more, like, intense as the alarm is going off. Okay. Uh... How, how many holes are there again? Uh, there's, like, 20 plus. It's just, it's just peppered throughout the room in an equal pattern. Is that infinity sign still on the door, Monty? Uh, it has faded. It faded? Yeah. So there's nothing on the door. There's nothing on the door. Uh, I'm going to try to run along the walls and see if there's anything worth investigating to see if there's any writing switches, anything. Okay. 16? 16? You don't see anything. It's a very secure room. It's all the glass. So, all the glass up at the top, then. Yeah, the ceiling is glass, right? Does that lead out into the sky? No, it's just like glass, like pyramids that have been set into the roof and are now actually getting even brighter as time is going on. Wait, uh, so are they, I'm are gonna they able to be shattered? Around, I'm going to feel around uh, the outer edges of the pedestal, the sides and everything, to see if I can find any sort of other place to press in. Okay. The red lights are now flashing. And as you look around the pedestal, you don't see anything but the button in the middle. I'll push uh, the button again, see if anything happens. All right. Happens. Yeah. As you push the button, the door opens behind you. Yep. Interesting. What about the stuff above us? Is it still going? It fades back into its clear look. And Kai, you now see as the door opens up and you are on the other side and you can see everyone inside looking a little frantic, but okay. As as time was going on, did it seem like it was getting harder and harder to breathe? Uh, that smell was intensifying, but it wasn't so much like... It was more like it became more noticeable. It wasn't like you were being hit with it. Like, you could smell it, though. Huh. You could, And like, the whirring in the walls has stopped. Mm. Okay. I think that was meant to scare us. I, I suppose, but it didn't change anything about the door. Hmm. Let's take another look at this door, and uh, no one touch that button, ever. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Money. <laughs> go ahead, Kashi. I was just gonna say I I'm going to use bardic knock and knock on the door, cause you never know. Okay. You clunk, 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 knock on the door. Nothing happens. Okay. Just gotta rule it out. Sometimes, you know. <laughs> you gotta be a bard to do that. Ah, oh, shit. Where's Manic? <laughs> I'm like 40. Fuck off. <laughs> I am like 30 or 40 years old. I don't need to. Just, just, like, just like a I, smash I cut to him diligent. sitting in a lazy boy Figure watching Golden Girls. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, I'm raising two teenagers. I'm busy. <laughs> oh, that's right. You have fucking kids. Sucks to be you. Um, Iskan's going to put his ear up against this door and see if he can hear anything on the other side. Sure. Roll a perception check. Uh, 18? You hear... It's weird. You're hearing the sound of the waterfall in stereo. You hear rushing water on the other side. It sounds like there's more water on the other side of the door. Not not like a river or anything. More like, uh, like another waterfall? Hmm. But it didn't open when we pressed the button, so... 
How are you supposed to get it open? Monty, could I try to identify that smell? Um, Arcana check? I'm not trained in it, but I've got a plus. Here we go! Nine. You're not sure. It, it smells like, I, 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 it smells like alchemical properties of some manner. Monty? Mm. Mm-hmm. If I was, if I had the capabilities to use Mirthful Leap, could I touch the glass? You could, yeah. You're gonna try and well, break well, the glass ceiling. You all watch as guys like actually like test the waters to like take a take a leap like five feet forward just to see if he can like hand palm the glass and he's successful too. All right, you jump up into the air and you high five the glass and nothing happens. Is the glass magical? The glass does not appear to be magical. No. Oh, guys, I don't detect any magic coming from it. It's mundane. Mundane. It was just lit up like fire. Well, we don't know what's behind it. Should we shatter it to find out? I'd be fine with that at this point. I don't know if breaking things is our best bet here, unless we're talking about breaking this door. Milo oh. kind of side-eyes you a little bit. So what do you suggest there, Iskan? Well, we could try to force the door before we try and shatter to the things on the ceiling. Okay, give me a second. Athletics check. All right. Oh, then that 20 on the other side. Damn. Don't oh, pay attention God. to it. It's you just there to taunt you. <laughs> shoulder and you shove, and it does not give at all. No soap. I would like to feel around the door along the edges and, uh, like, uh, where it meets the wall and see if there's any sort of soft points that can be pressed in. Okay. Roll an investigation check. One of these will be above a 10. Uh, 13. There it is. You, you feel around, you don't find anything. It's all solid. Monty, could I see if this is just a button on a pedestal? You've already investigated the button on the pedestal. There's a <laughs> button on a pedestal. Sure, <laughs> go haven't. for it. Go for it. <laughs> Here we go. That's a 15. Guess what? It's a button on a pedestal. <laughs> Nothing's changed. I've come to a conclusion. <laughs> I feel like we're missing something. There's got to be some sort of other switch or something somewhere that would open this door. There's nothing else here, Iskan. I hold my I, hand axe looking at the glass. I give I mean, you a I give you a thumbs up. <laughs> if there's nothing here, doesn't that just mean that the hint was wrong? No, cuz there's a door right there. But it doesn't open. You don't know that. We haven't tried everything yet. I've... I've got a... a crazy idea. I'm for it. What if... We press the button again... And then just wait? That sounds like a great way to die. I'd rather break the glass and try that than wait around to see what happens. All right. We'll try your idea first. Uh, mirthful leap, and I, I butt the, I butt the end of my axe into where one of the uh, lights were shining from. Okay, you got it. Go ahead and roll the hit. Yay! Who? Twenty-three. That, that absolutely hits. Going all damage. Oh, well, Jesus. Rush. Nice. As you jump into the air and you crash, you actually just break the glass pyramid, and chunks of glass fall to the ground. Luckily, it doesn't shatter into a bunch of dangerous pieces like caltrops, but it does fall to the ground and crashes. And you notice kind of where it was is sort of like a mirror set. Like there's like a, a mirror in a similar kind of square shape, kind of set into the roof. Uh, Milo. Uh, you detect conjuration from that. All right, so, huh? I guess the light's coming out of that mirror then. It's so odd. It is it is the hole big enough to determine if the whole ceiling is just this mirror, 
or it looks like it's like set in here almost like a spoiler alert like a light bulb like it's meant to be slotted in there sure yeah you said while we were waiting um the smell of that chemical was getting stronger and stronger right you did hear whirring in the walls as well yes hmm so it's a little too late to try and identify what that whirring was is there a way we can reflect that light into maybe one of the holes? You already attempted to do that with the lantern and the light spell, so I will say, unfortunately, that is not possible. Okay. Should I just break the other glass? I would, yeah, I was about to suggest that. I mean, you could see if there was a platform up there if you'd like, yeah. Yeah, sure, fuck it. I can mirthful leap it, so what do I okay, see if ahead. I leap it? As you go up to leap, you see that the mirror has a small like kind of like piece of wire that comes out and it looks like it goes into the wall in a very tiny hole like threaded in through the wall some kind of wiring attached to it this place is crazy hmm well the only other two things i could think of is Break the rest of the glass, see if we find anything, and if not, hit the button and wait. If we do the button thing again, I suggest maybe a few of us stay outside, just in case. In case of what? I don't know. You won't be coming back in, the door's gonna be closed. Well, we know how to open the door from the outside. We also know how to open the door from the inside, and if one of us dies, then who's opening it from the inside? No one, but if people are outside, after some time has passed, you can open the door and see if we're okay. Oh, that sounds good for the guys who are outside. You know what? If you all want to wait outside, that's fine. I'll, I'll be more than happy to stay here to push the button, see what happens. Just my idea. I'll wait with you. Uh, well, I was going to suggest I stay, too. I can I can hold my breath for a pretty long time, just in case it's like a noxious gas or something. Gaius, are you staying inside, too? No. <laughs> no. That noise. No. I love it. You just hell you slid it. No. <laughs> that was so good. Oh my god. No. No. All right. You pressing the button? I will Wait. press the button. Oh no. Before you do that. Uh huh. Just thought of something. Uh huh. Uh, do I have, let, let's all just clear out of the room for just a brief second. What are I you planning? just want to see something. Okay. Mr. Seat Lolly, thank you. Um, uh, and I'm going to pull out my Tinder box. Okay. And I'm just going to. You did We're so? gonna explode. Nothing happens. Right. Gas wasn't flammable. That's how you decided to check? <laughs> we all. Th there is an ongoing theme of fire with this group. That is the most Genie Heineman like, my death laser isn't working. I'm standing right in it, sort of. <laughs> I'm standing right in and I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Uh, I see you wanted to activate the heavy flamer, brother. From now on. Oh, step back in. Okay. Well, at what. least if it were flammable, I would have been blown into the ocean where you could have saved me. Honestly, maybe I should stay. He's kind of, if you're staying, going to stay in there, I'm just going to be out here in case one of you two drops. Someone's going to need to get you back up. That's not a terrible idea. All right, whenever you're Othor, all ready. Wait, 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 Otho, are you sure about this? What other options do we have? Continue breaking things? That's a fun idea. I concur. Eat. 
Yes, but fun doesn't equate to getting our job done any quicker. Okay, Kai, you, you enter inside. Uh, okay, well, if you're sure... Uh, Here goes the us, neighborhood. Give us, like, five minutes. If the door doesn't open, uh, come save us, please. All right. All right. I press the button. I hold my breath. <laughs> I like how that's animated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, it's actually really cool. They did. <laughs> uh, I'm going to. You said there was whirring coming from somewhere around yep. here. And as you enter inside, the whirring begins, and the flashing is now like more aggressive because the glass that kind of central out of it it's not like a strobe light essentially like a, oh, like God. you're getting like a floodlight right into the room <laughs> it just needs a klaxon now to make right. it even worse well that's what we're hearing that's what that, that's what that alarm, alarm is mr seat lolly if you wouldn't mind checking out the door i want to see if pressing that button has changed anything uh, still holding my breath, I'm going to look over the door once more and see if anything, okay. any button has appeared or anything like that. Roll an investigation check. Can I... Uh, eight. Eight? There seems to be no change. He just looks back at you and shakes his head. <sighs> okay, and that smell's getting more intense now. It's starting to get back to that place it was before, and you hear more whirring behind the walls. What does it smell like? Like alchemical something. You're not sure. Like probably like a mixture of Windex and vinegar is the best way to describe the smell. Ew. Is it poison? You don't know. <laughs> Taste it and tell us. <laughs> Lick the walls. <laughs> is it leaving any kind of residue? You don't see any residue in this room. It's nothing, nothing's coming out of the holes. You just smell an odor. Um, I guess walk up to the walls where the worrying is coming from and see if I can uh, listen to it and maybe identify what it might be. I'm going you to assist like a, him. <laughs> you hear a percolating hissing noise now coming from the walls. A hissing noise like steam? Like a percolating hissing noise, like a bubbling almost, but like a high pitch noise. And the lights are going ballistic. It's like strobe light hell. You're at a rave now. Jesus, I'm just gonna so slowly back away and just have my hand over the button, just in case anything seems like it's about to happen. He's gonna just like looks at Kai and just shrugs. Well. If we do die, I love you, little brother. You can tell that the guy doesn't know whether that's a joke or real. <laughs> <laughs> and if we don't, I was right. The door ahead of you opens, and as it does, oh! a spray comes out. If any of you have a disease or condition, it is now gone as the spray comes out and decontaminates you. Oh. <laughs> you the two of you here from behind the wall, well, <laughs> look who right? was right. We are fine. And Iskan will stop holding his breath. Door's still closed on our end, Monty? On your end, yes. Can we scry the uh, ah. symbol in there? As you scry the symbol, it refills. It doesn't let you in. Oh. Well, that was sort of anticlimactic. We can't get in. Mm, I see what they did there. What's that? We cannot get in. Oh, they can't get in. Oh. Um, We could hmm. just press the button again. Uh, Yes, let's try that. Okay. If you press <laughs> the button, push you, the button again. you push it down and it <laughs> retracts back up. Uh, it's not press working. Press it again? He presses it again. 
it pops back up. Presses it one more time for a good measure. It pops back up. Uh, oh. Button's broken. Are oh, you pepper. sure you can't get in? We'll etch it multiple times, see if it lets us in. It does not let you in. Mm. Oh, dear. Uh, the button appears to not be functioning anymore. Hey, Otho? Yes. What if we went deeper and it just reset on its own? It was in the default position when we came in here. Wouldn't it have to reset eventually? Good thinking. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> Mr. Brightbeam, Mr. Agni, we're going to continue deeper inside and see if we can't find a way to reset this whole shindig. All if right. you get inside, press the button and wait, and then the door will open. Okay. All right. All right. I can't believe Good luck. <laughs> we split the fucking party. And you split you split uh. the party of like the most the, the two most let's go adventure and the two oh, most no! yeah oh, I'm, no. I'm just gonna be like, right, and then the, the, here, the three and the skeptics two... <laughs> yeah all right we'll just we'll just sit here with our hey, fingers up be, our hey, ass the entire we actually adventure have a chance of avoiding combat now oh my so... god you guys were having so much fun adventure in here <laughs> <laughs> Well, Why? Orange Man, here, he's giving out autographs, was... Mr. Bright. <laughs> <laughs> when all you wanted to do was have an adventure and you get stuck outside. <laughs> Your <laughs> Gaius's uncle? <laughs> Let's check a break this fucking door down. He's, <laughs> you can't stay. he's on the way. <laughs> fucking uh, naked Gaius thought I'm breaking this door down. <laughs> you Gaius will never believe who we ran into. <laughs> Otho, Kai, and Iskan, as you proceed forward, first of all, what hits you is the sheer humidity. It is like <laughs> soup in this room. Yay! And as you step forward, Kai, it's slippery. There seems to be a thin like layer of algae. And what stands out the most, though, is the sound. Exactly like outside of this chamber, the rumbling of the waterfall, you see... Uh, who has light, by the way? Oh shit! Oh, Wait, I've got no, the lantern. No, I've got the lantern no, still. The lantern. No, oh, I did have the lantern. lantern. Oh, you I've got see. an hour's worth of light. You have a yes. half hour at this point. <laughs> One second, I got to reveal here. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. No, no, oh. it's fine. You see, in the middle of the room, let me grab my page here on this, a large broken glass tube stands in the center of the room. Running water rushes through rapidly. However, the edge of it has been shattered and gored on the glass is a goblin. Ugh. Gored as in, like, two horns in his chest, or what? Like impaled on the glass it looks like a large like glass cylinder but it looks like part of it shattered on one side and water is currently spitting into this chamber uh you see that there's green and kind of blue algae uh along with a lot of little crabs that seem to be scuttling away from the light as you enter into the space there's a smell of mold and mildew and it's very gross and as you all step into that space shh, oh one second sorry shh, chunk the door slams behind you. Well, oh, do I? Well, I, I do. I hear the. Uh, do I hear the stone sliding? You do. You hear a slam. Uh, I scry the symbol in the door. Your door opens. Oh, uh, do we, we hear that? You do. You do hear a door open behind you. Quick, we can still wait, go wait. abandon them. We I, just have to keep going. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have it. to wait. Uh, I'll, my ear will like twitch, and I'll like hold hold my elbow in front of Eastgen, and I'll like grab the back of Kai's poncho. Wait a second. I think I think they're in the next room. Guys, we made it in. Damn. All right, press press the button. All right, and pressing. wait. I'm gonna Tweet. smash that like button. You no. smash that like button. <laughs> oh, I couldn't get to sit through the whole thing. You gotta wait through the whole thing again. <laughs> Shout out to Lori and Ross who made this for me. Thank Hell you. Hell yeah. Hey, hey Lori what's up, Lori? Lori? So, Thank uh, you for the very, uh, very aggravating and nerve wracking, like, build up alarm thing. Wait, so, what? What? So, so, so guys, confused. do you know any jokes? 
<laughs> I know 200 ways to kill a guy. What's your favorite one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we've got we've got what three minutes? That was a lie. That, that was a lie. That was a joke. Oh, I'm not very funny. I'm sorry, I failed you. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, Go guys, you're taking a, a, I think, a bit too extreme there. No, I'm fine. Can't you tell by my voice? <laughs> Zito, I love how hard you're trying not to laugh right now. <laughs> I can't. I can hear it in your voice. You know what? Let's do that in character. Guy is a sticker again under his voice. <laughs> you just hear T. Mm -hmm. Cue laughter. <laughs> the applause, an applause sign comes out of the wall. The laugh track <laughs> place. Such a strange place. Something that's this automated. Kind of strange to me. Seems like it's taking an awful long time. Uh, it was about this long for us too. We're just not panicking, so the time's going a lot slower. It's, it's right, Monty, you, yeah. Monty, you can open the door now. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> we get the point. No. Lori and Ross work hard on this, so we're gonna yeah, play the whole damn thing. <laughs> I can't hear anything. I, I paid for this. You're listening to it. <laughs> so how was your day, Milo? Bye. My day's pretty good, boys. I hope to see some good, you know, have a nice adventure. I I want to see the world and do. It's all proud, you know? I can't wait to write this in, the Acne Odyssey. Maybe you've heard of it? I have, it's a good book so far. I can't wait to read the whole thing. I hope you can read Giant. I can't, so I'll need an intermediary. Why is this taking so long? <laughs> I'm sure you did a great job, Lauren. What? I can't hear it, but I'm sure it was great. <laughs> Guys, so so, what are you gonna write about us in your in your book? I mean, I may have already. I'd be curious to hear what you have to say about us. What? Lord, did you make this actually three fucking minutes long? <laughs> yes. Dude, guys is scribbling like this guy is scribbling vigorously in the fucking book. Yeah, yeah. The door this open. is the DBZ filler episode, for fuck's sake! Oh, look at that, the door's open. Oh, hey, right. how's it going? Oh, hi, how's it going? <laughs> you don't have to scream, I'm right here. Fuck! I mean, indoor, <laughs> indoor voices. You should really use your indoor voice, Kai. This... Ooh. Who's Kai? I kill a motherfucker! <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to the tube room. You're not my brother. <laughs> what, what happened to that goblin? Uh, stepping closer to take a look, does it look like he was just, like, slammed into the glass and that's how he died? Uh, roll a medicine check. Oh, fuck. Uh, I, if, if, if you will allow, I will do that. I am trained in that. 15. Sure. Let's go. That's, okay, 15. <laughs> just don't look at it. Just don't look at it. <laughs> Level 15. Uh... You get the sense, based on how crumpled the body is, this goblin was pulled into this, like, water spout and gored on the glass. He was pulled into it? Yeah. It seems to be running from the roof. It seems to be, based off of your proximity, you know there's a river, you scan with your map. This hole has is like a hole in the river that seems to be pulling water through. Wow. And probably once upon a time, this glass piece was solid and the water just ran through, but instead it's open kind of broken open, and now water's kind of spraying inside. Ah, so it's not like flooding the chambers. It's just no. sort of spattering everywhere. By the way, it is slippery as hell as you walk. That's that. Hey, uh, Milo. <laughs> yeah? You remember that thing you did uh, with the cart? Can yeah. you do that to this tube? Uh, I don't think so. The, the cart was one thin, but this is a huge structure. I don't think I could mend it. Uh, that also took quite a while, if I remember. Uh, it's a single action. Uh, yes, but look at the casting time. Uh, Did I have my lantern back? I mean, he spent ten minutes oh, to yes. cast detect magic, so one minute for mending. Is one, good. yeah, one oh, minute for like uh, one foot of something to mend. We I would will... be here for ten minutes. <laughs> 
Well, how, will... how big is the break? Because if it's only splashing water, I can't imagine. It's a that huge big. break, but the the gravity is making it so a lot of it doesn't fall in. It's kind of like a. Right now, it's spitting about like a amount of water equal to if you ran your shower without a shower curtain, essentially. Like it's still mostly hitting the inside, but it's got enough opening to kind of exit out slightly. Okay, I'm going to also my lantern near the broken door. Okay, this door is made out of iron and is rusted to all high hell. You hear the sound. It's actually very hard to hear in here. Unfortunately, perception checks with audio is disadvantaged because of the giant rumbling water behind you. Can I fit through that hole? You can. A small creature can fit through that hole. Well, I could go down that hole, or we could see about the rest of the doors and see if there are any other rooms. Yeah. It looked like there was an open door at the north end of the hallway. I assume, money. these crates are just rotten and nothing. They are. Uh, the... One second, I'm just reading here. Uh, they're, they're all rotting crates with algae kind of growing on them. You actually notice a few crabs scuttle inside of them to hide from you. Oh. <laughs> uh, one of the crates, though, is marked fragile, though. In, like, bold red lettering that is faded with time. Uh... kind of want to open that. Okay. You very easy. The wood is like rotten, and as you pull back the boards, you hear clinking inside. And as you look inside, it is filled with vials, corked vials. Is there liquid in them, or just the vials themselves? As you reach in and pull one out, they are empty. Free vials. Um, what do they weigh? I'll double check. Vials weigh. I have I'm, one. I was uh, hoping there might be some avocados in there, so we can make avocado toast. A Nobody wants wild... that. Shut up, millennial. Sorry. You can't God talk damn. to your elders that way. God damn. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't have a listed weight, but they can hold up to four ounces of liquid. There are a lot of them, so I'm gonna say you know five of them would count like half a pound. I would say just because there's quite a few of them. How many are there then? As you look inside and kind of move throughout the crate, there's about a hundred of these in this box. Ooh. I would be, I'd be happy to take 10, if I may. Okay. That'd be half a pound for 10 of them. The Ooh, corks are a little bit, need. the corks are a little, probably might need to be replaced, but the glass is fine. It's untouched. It's just old. Yeah. Could, I, could I, could I, could I possibly take 20 or is that, is that too much money? 20 is fine. That'd be, I'd say one pound for 20 I just, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking for one clean pound because I can't input, I don't think I can input Oh, no, I can't input percentile. Whatever, I'm taking ah. 20. <laughs> yeah. The old adventurer's adage, take everything that isn't nailed down. Well, in that case, I'm taking this goblin. I All right. Mean... <laughs> the goblin's corpse is bloated, and as you pull it off of the glass, it like it's like pulling, like, I hate to say it, it's going to be really grass. You know when you pull, like, meat apart and it just comes off the bone? Because it's, like, so, like, meat. tender. It's yeah, it's, like, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's like slow cooked meat as you pull a goblin and half of its body just remains. Its bones are like just gelatinous. Uh, but it does have a bag on it as it slaps to the ground in a horrible splatting noise. Uh, since you're right there, Otho, you'll see Iskan like trying to remove the body from the glass and as only half of it comes off, he just sort of drops it and like starts wiping his hands on his leathers and just looks at you like... <laughs> I'm not sure why you did that. I just didn't seem right to leave him, but now I regret all of my choices. Uh, an unnamed death in a dank sewer that no one will ever visit except for us. I think it's a very fitting death. Well, we don't exactly know what these tubes, what this tube does, so... What was he carrying? A bag. <laughs> you want to search him, search him yourself. Ugh. Okay, money. I search him. <laughs> All right, you grab the bag. The bag itself is also moldy, but it is latched. Uh, inside you find just wet rations that are just like green fuzz. You're not even mm. sure what they used to be. Ha, um, mystery meat. Literally, mis not even mystery meat, mystery something. Um, <laughs> you also find a steel dagger with a nice pommel. Okay. Uh, and two very crude goblin daggers. Uh, also, this might be more of your territory. I'm going to hand you the really nice dagger. I'll, uh, like, all... wipe it on the remains of the goblins, like, clothing or whatever before placing it in my inventory. 
Oh, it makes it worse because it's just je jelly. So you just kind of <laughs> smear more, and you're like, oh god. Oh. Just goblin butter. <laughs> the jam's By the right. way, the little little tiny white crabs that have been hiding come out of hiding and kind of begin to just pick off of the goblin and like kind of scatter as you guys reach around for things and come back as you're gone, almost like flocks of birds. Mine, 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 mine. Yeah, literally. <laughs> uh, Myla, you also find five copper pieces. Sick. Uh, you find 50 feet of rope, but it's kind of moldy, but it's still probably usable. Okay. It's just slick. And you find a, a bottle, like a rounded bottle with red liquid inside and a cork. Okay, I'll hang on to that. I hold my light out down the hallway that's open to the north. Sure. How far does it go? Uh, hooded lantern... Well, it was the light spell, so how far does the light spell go out to? Oh, uh, good question, Mega Man. Tw oh, 20 feet, 20 feet of bright, 20 feet of dim. So it's 40 feet. All right. Right there. Oh, shit. Come on, roll 20. Does the rope weigh the same amount as um, hemp and rope? Yep. Okay. That is exactly what it is. It's like slightly moldy hemp and rope. Path continues forward. And this way you don't have to squeeze by yourself, Milo. That was kind of the idea. Does Gai Gaius, do you have any rope? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. It's getting a little heavy on my end. Uh, before we leave, I'd like to see if the door over here has any words on it. Uh, it does not appear to have words on it, but it appears to have a square in it in the middle with sand on it. Another sand-filled hole in this door. Any clues? No, it's just a square hole. Hmm. Might find something further in, then. Well, then, no time like the present. Shall we move forward? Ah, right, let's go. I look back and see if uh, the two brothers back there are eager to move this way, or would rather go another way. Uh, just circling around. Okay. Here I go, moving on up this way. Right, guys, as you get to that point, you hear a noise. Oh, that's A terrifying. mechanical chicken? Someone's someone's playing some really uh, tune. I hold the heads. light. I hold the light up to see if that's coming from the ceiling. You look up. It's just ceiling. <sighs> oh. It seems to be coming from the room ahead. Hmm. Uh, can I add more light now that I move forward? Sure. As you move forward, one second. Roll twenty's being a stinker again. Um, I guess I'll just tell my companions that I hear mechanical whirring forward. I was about what the fuck? Whoa, what? Fucking Sorcerer's Apprentice going on with this broom? Kill the broom, fire. Bro. It's weak to fire. You see a broom just... Um, and you notice the ground has been worn away, like, <laughs> <laughs> probably by whatever this is. There's like a Dear clear God. in the ground. Put it out of its misery. It's, uh, it's analog Mr. Dalliard. <laughs> Uh, guy, guy just turns and looks to everyone else. Don't be alarmed, but I think we found a witch's den. Well, that's kind of scary. No, that's exciting. I move in and I look at the broom. It's just kind Gen of kicking some dust around. Gently grab. Okay, roll an athletics check to grapple it. <laughs> 25 uh, It did not appear for me uh, Yeah, I'm seeing 25 uh, oh, it, it did when I scrolled down For some reason, it didn't Roll 20 had a bit of a fit You grab the broom and it like tries to resist you It's like, like, it's like desperately trying to get back to the floor to sweep It's like, no, the dust, it needs to be cleaned And you're just like holding it back as you hold in your hand And it's like wiggling like a fish, almost trying to be free Shh, shh, shh in here. So what's going on in the rest of this room? We'll find out after the break. 
Uh, 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 I'm gonna go get some birthday cake. I'm gonna Ooh. go use the restroom and not have cake. I'm gonna start the Bosco halftime show. What's up, nerds and nerdettes? Oh, shit. This is fun so far, you guys. This is great. Uh, Xenal Ida oh, with 200 bits just, saying, what happened? Someone just disconnected. O'Connor. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's back. First vaults, now an acoustic Mr. Dalliard. When will Monty stop copying Gateway? Honestly, I get it. Gateway's a great show. Monty's a great DM, so she's going to steal from great sources. So I get it. It makes sense. Tiki the Troll, thank you so much for the tier one sub. I'd have something clever to say, but I just got home from work. So this is the message. Excellent. Uh, Bosco, I got to ask you, but do you think CM Punk is going to get suspended? I think he's going to get fired. I don't see how you couldn't fire him. But yes, suspended, no title. This is absurd. Papusa, thank you so much for the bits. Ahoy, Bosco. It's almost football time. You ready? No. No, I'm not. Jake, thank you for the 45 bits. No message, just bits. So thank you guys. Don't forget to grab your bingo cards if you're playing along. They are on the Discord. They are made by the wonderful Hope over on the Discord. Give them a shout out. If you're not on the Discord, what are you even doing? Uh, Mike, thank you so much for the 20 bits. Uh, once again, the Kai Winona ship will sail. The more you want ships to sail, the less they're going to. Every Unexpectables one ship you put out there sank. You guys are bad luck. Don't do this. I'm just warning you. Uh, we got Morth Randor with 100 bits. Hi, Bosco. Why, hello. Uh, LA Kip, thank you so much for the bits. I'm convinced we need a campaign to replace Prince Division to soak up the bad rolls. Well, that's supposed to be Gateway, isn't it? Isn't Gateway where all the bad rolls go on Connor's end? No, I'm aware, Zaka. That's why I'm saying I don't see how he can come back. Uh, Krabius, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Bosco, why are you the most liked but the most unspoken character? <laughs> well, first of all, there's a lot of people that would disagree with you. Second of all, I don't know. Just not my time right now. Congratulations, guys. Everybody sink, but Panic and Helena. Congratulations. One of your ships didn't sink. One of your ships didn't sink. I don't know if I would consider Task in Winter a ship. That was all Zito. Hello. Also, that's me. for those Hello. of you that are saying Solly and Greckles, most of you didn't want that ship to sail. You're like, oh, God, please, no. Not Greckle. She could do so much better. Uh, don't come to me now and say, this is proof of your ship sailing. You tried to sink that yourself. I was Hi, there. I read the comments. What, what, what was going on with me? Oh, people are claiming that the, the winter... Uh, what was your character's name? Fucking red dude. Oh, my God. Short, angry. What was his name? I think it was like Chore or Quest. Chore, yeah, Chore or... and Winter. They're like claiming... Uh, that they shipped and sailed that ship. And I'm like, no, that was all Zito. Zito made that happen. Yeah, you guys, what the fuck? I'm, yeah, that's what, what I'm saying. Like, I'll, I'll give them Helena and Panic. They shipped that a long time. But that's it. That's all they got. Remember, well, remember when died. People, remember when people shipped Willow and Panic? They sure did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Zen, you guys should stop shipping Remy with everybody. Because, nope. Oh, my God. That was uh, your fault. We I all know the. Thank you for the 300 bits. First time catching the show live. Love this since first campaign and glad the rolls keep coming. Yes, they do. I, I love you, Unexpectables say... meme chat. I love you so much. You guys are so great. What happened? I, I was going to say that the one true pairing for Remy is uh, Remy X Loneliness. That is not even remotely true if you yeah. remember how the story ended. I don't. Uh, I didn't care about Remy's part. Clear enough. Uh, Krabby, I only cared about main bits. characters. Av Remy for life. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Even Sorry. though it didn't happen. 
Oh my god, the fucking banana fish. Avion fan, thank you for the 50 bits. Fuck YouTube. We in Twitch wanted Sully <laughs> plus Greckles. Some of y'all didn't. No, you can't. Don't act like the Twitch chat all wanted Sully and Greckles. Don't even. I'll go back and find the VODs somehow. Oh, that's uh, so fucking good. I, I miss see. Helga too, Protoss, but she's, you know. She's in a better place. No, she's not. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe. We don't know. We, we don't, don't know if she's in a better place. She's, she's in the bar in the sky. She's babysitting gods at this point. Uh, CG, thank you for the 100 bits. Is loose lips sink ships a euphemism for cheating on your supposed SO? No, not until you just said that. Bad ghost. Down, CG. Bad ghost. Uh, it's more Mike, along thank the you for the 10 of... bits. I didn't really I'm watch back. campaign one, but I'm shipping Kravius the Mighty and chat. Fair enough. Okay, uh, Zako, have fun. <laughs> Zako Duo with 100 bits. The only canon ship for Remy is Remy X Prisoner of War Trauma. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. Lord. All right. Uh, Burnout Vaughn with 100 bits. I'm just here for Kai to learn some spells. Everything else is just extra. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Damn. We've got... Uh, Dwayne Knight, thank you for the 245 <laughs> bits. So, how many ships did sail? I must know. Not many, sadly. Uh, Bubba Bob, thank you for the 500 bits. Can we get a drawing of Winona parting the waterfall with a Beyblade just like <laughs> Moses did the Red Sea? Oh my sea? god, fucking Moses is Beyblade, dude. <laughs> you know what I ship? I ship Gaius X Combat. Yep. I do too. I, I actually, I would ship that, and that would sail, but chat didn't do that. So uh, Yeah, yeah, so that's all me. That's me, chat. Where are you so at, chat? You, I missed that one. one. Are we all back? Uh, I believe so. Connor back? Yeah. yeah. He's on his way back. Uh, Nerdy yeah. Gaming. Wait. Oh, there he is. Nerdy Gaming, Inc. Thank you for the bits. Greckles X Remy. That one died hard, guys. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, Disco Tech Priest with a 1,000 bits. Helga, or a no, pause of bar is like hurting the children again. And Travis Akira, thank you for the hundred bits. Thank hey. you. Bless you. Ugh. Whoa. Let me take one last bite of my wheel of Gouda cheese. Go ahead. I got two more bits I can call out. Uh, Death Hawk Down. Nice name. Hundred bits. Let's not forget Borky X Scarbles. Yeah, that didn't sail either, guys. Uh, Crabius with a hundred bits is Hell Me Helga X Remy Cool. You could ship it. It would never happen. Helga's not dating nobody. We've established this. She has many children. You never asked how many kids she had. Yeah, we didn't need to get into that. I'd be that. scared to ask. She had she had sixteen kids. I I can believe and that. every single one of them yeah. could kill you with their Wait, kinky. I thought she didn't have kids. She did. She had sixteen children. Helga had sex. I... No, Helga didn't have sex. Helga fucked. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> good yes. answer. Good, very good answer. Excellent. Plus two. Plus two. Mom. Anyway, <laughs> you know what? That whole bit stuff that was all worthy just for that. Just clip for that. that. Yeah. Clip that. <laughs> so, if that's not clipped immediately, mm -hmm. I don't know what you guys are doing. This room is well cleaned due to the living broom that sweeps this area. Inside of this room contains a flat moving cart. In the corner of the room here, in the um, south uh, east corner, is a banner, a flag. There's a long metal topped table here that contains a myriad of things. And there's a somewhat long glass tube, a vertical glass tube here, and a long sort of uh, metal and wood framed dresser or drawer of some kind that's very wide and very flat. Uh, what does the banner say? The banner doesn't say anything. But it does have something on it. It is very faded, but you can see it. I can't believe you've done this to me, Monty. <laughs> what? What would I read on the banner? You can't read it. Uh, the banner has what appears to be a... Um, a, a crest of a, a black dragon with a sword kind of piercing through its chest uh, with a maroon back and a blue stripe running, kind of slashing through the back, essentially. It looks to be a heraldry of some kind. Uh, does anyone recognize this? <clears throat> Maybe Do Otho? We? Let me take a look. 
<clears throat> do also, I? Also, you do not recognize this at all. None of mm. you do. Kai, just make sure to move. Oh, yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, unless you want to stay in the tube room. He moves back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess further back through the dungeon. <laughs> just leaves. Um, what sort of knickknacks are we looking at on this, um, tabletop? Uh, you see, uh, on the table is a small jade dragon statue. It's kind of, like, very blocky in nature. Uh, you see there's kind of a granite slab, and next to it is a mortal and pestle made out of a similar material. Uh, so that's why you ask. That's why I ask, yeah. And in front of you... <laughs> Uh, is a set of four glass vials that seem to have a green liquid in them. Notably, there is also a latched book that seems to be curling, like the papers are curling at the edges. Really quick question. Um, <clears throat> because we had potions of healing in our inventory prior, does the red liquid bottle that I have or any of these green liquid bottles look any sort it, similar at all? Like viscosity, shades of color, etc.? The uh, the <clears throat> bottle you picked up from the goblin does look similar. These do not look similar at all. They look completely different. I guess maybe we shouldn't touch these. I have no idea what these are. I'm starting to get the idea that this isn't really a dungeon. No, this seems like some sort of <clears throat> facility, almost. It's like a laboratory. Did, did anyone else feel a bit better after going through that loud chamber? Uh, not I felt, really. I don't know, I felt like I kind of had a, a tickle going in the back of my throat, and after going in the chamber, it just went away. If anything, I felt a little relieved from all the stress from the alarm, but that's about it. All right, well, let's keep going. We're looking for magical items of any kind. Iris looks in the drawers. <clears throat> As you go to grab the drawers, <laughs> they appear to be locked. Is there a keyhole? There is a keyhole, yep. I, I look back at the broom. <laughs> Are you a key? I, no, I grab, no, I grab it. <laughs> I flip it up. And I rustle my hand through the actual broom bit to see if there's a key in there. Oh my god! Zero, okay. You can't just do that. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 search and the uh, broom kind of reach out and slaps you after you complete your search and you find nothing inside. <laughs> I let him go on his way. He goes off and keeps sweeping the floor. Guys, are these locked? I. Uh, Otho. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We've seen him do it before. <laughs> Be fair, I've done it before. Could you possibly get these open? They're not warded, are they? They're not going to explode on me. I don't know. Do you want to give me another ten minutes? <sighs> nah, why would they be warded? Oh. There are six drawers vertically. I thought you were saying there are six <clears throat> wards. <laughs> <laughs> there are six drawers, and each of them seems to be individually locked. Which one do you want to open? Uh, let's go for the second one. Okay. I was about to say, check the top drawer. Every idiot stashes their most valuable stuff on the top drawer. Don't look at my top drawers when I go home. We, we don't know where you live. Good. Also, I don't think we're dealing with idiots. <laughs> yes, of course. Shifty eyes. Right. You know, money. I was just just really quick. Screw it. Um, I'll I'll take the ten minutes to reapply. Uh, detect magic. I, I need to anyway because okay. we're looking for magic items. <laughs> you you detect two magical signatures. They're weak though. They're not very mm. strong. The cart and this glass tube over here. Give off magic. Is the cart covered? No, it is just a metal iron cart with a wooden handle. 
I'm getting some magical residue from this cart. I mean, it's a magic item. The thing that's really weird to you is uh -huh. you don't recognize what type of magic this is, even with oh. detect magic. It seems unique. Oh, it's primordial of course. <laughs> <laughs> this is ancient technology, and it's just like a fridge. It's some kind. <laughs> it's some kind of unknown. I've never seen a reading like this. Uh, what exactly are you seeing? A very faint glow from the cart. It's so odd. I, I saw the same thing from the, the tube over there next to Otho. Uh, I will go take a look at the tube since the cart appears to be a cart. Does the tube the, appear to be anything other than a tube? The top of the tube uh, is metal. The bottom of the tube is also metal. Um, and the middle section is glass, uh, very thick glass. Uh, and the inside contains some sort of liquid, but you're not able to determine what it is. Um, it's probably about six feet tall and mm. like quite rounded. It's very large. Uh, and Milo, you detect magic at the bottom of the tube specifically. Mm. It's coming is, from the bottom. Is the liquid in the tube of a similar color to the vials on the table? No, it is different. It's kind of like a slightly reddish, but very slightly reddish liquid. Okay. As uh, Milo points out the bottom, I will uh, crouch down and take a look around the bottom of the tube. Okay. Uh, you look, and it appears no different than the top. Uh, Otho, did you want to try and crack open that drawer? Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> I thought you were. I was going to do all that while you were rolling. Uh, so what'll this be? What, what sort of this check is this? This will be a thieves' tools check to crack the lock. Which is, I'm guessing, dexterity based. All right. It's your thieves' tools. It should let you roll thieves' tools. You should be proficient I, too. Yeah, if I am proficient. proficient to, then you add it to your roll if it's not already yep. added. I'm just tools usually just, ask what ability they're supposed to be based off of. So. I'm just gonna roll a dex check and then add three to it. Excellent. That's an eight. eight. Wow. You try and get into it, but it seems like it's rusted inside. Mm. There's rust on the inside. I think if I try any harder, it might break the lock. I, I, anyway. I, I, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. I'm not detecting any, mag uh, any magic from it. <sighs> Still, it might be worthwhile trying to find out what this place was. Would you like to try another drawer? Sure, I'll just try the one uh, directly downward from it. Okay. You know, the... we could just try and find the key. That well, is also true. If you want to look for it, go ahead. I mean, we're looking for everything, right? Sort There's of the idea. Room. I'll just try one more time to open the... The fifth drawer, fifth drawer. I I'm gonna help the fifth him. Fifth drawer. Okay. So I w I would like to help him to give him advantage. Okay, advantage. Good roll to advantage. Good. I'm done with you. Roll twenty. Let's go, Connor. Okay. Uh, that'll Let's be a nineteen. Go. Nineteen. You. You're doing which drawer? So from top to bottom, it's one, two, the three, four, five, six. Which one are you doing? Five. Doing five. All right. You and pull out this large door. There's a dusty smell to it. And inside, <laughs> laid out flat, as you pull it out and set it on top of the shelf, is a very detailed diagram of a creature with a lion's head, a dragon's head, and a goat's head all attached oh. to the body with wings and, like, a snake tail. And it's all pointed out, and, like, some of the wording is smudged and worn away, but it is a full-on, like biological diagram of some sort of creature. You may roll an arcana check to identify this creature. Can oh, any of us attempt that? Yes, you may all... You can group check this, even. Okay. Sure. Group, group check, it. check it. Group. We all hey, deserve. that's well. Well. <laughs> nice. well, never mind. You got it. <laughs> Sorry, for switch over. Seven! <laughs> Sixteen. Guys, please. Eight. Ten. I don't do magic. Ten. Uh, Milo, you recognize it immediately. Otho, you also recognize it, and Kai, you have to kind of like peek between people, but then you eventually see it. Uh, this is a chimera. It is a, yeah. a diagram of a chimera. 
Oh, I've heard stories of these nasty things. Uh, what exactly are they? How much would I know, Monty? They're monstrosities of some kind. Um, you don't know the stories of them. It's kind of a mystery where they came from. Um, but they're very, very dangerous beasts. They're not even the most, like, not even the most, like, prepared adventurers will go after. They're, they've been known to defend the Trevor Troves of evil creatures for millennia. It's Would I know what they're know. capable of doing? Like Fire breath and all mm. manner of other nasty things. They also fly, which is fun. So, it, I, want you to, I want you to imagine kind of like a dragon, but, you know, with all these extra heads and horrible things that they can do. So, not nice, not good. Sick. You know, that might actually be worth something. It's such a detailed diagram. I've never seen anything like it. Are it's they very real? old. Are they real? Like, is that something we need to worry about finding? Uh, maybe. Maybe at some point. If, if this guy, whoever lived here, was researching it, he may have been trying to make it, for all we know. Why would you ever do that? A lot of people do a lot of sick things in this world. Honestly, although it might be good to search all the drawers now that we find this. So do we want to wait while I try and pick all of these drawers, or do we want to try and see if we can find a key somewhere? I guess we could find a key. This place ain't going anywhere. All right, let's hope Very we well. find that thing in here. All right, let's, let's check out the left room then. Okay. Go left! Hold out Go the lantern. Left. Your lantern refracts off of a large sheet of glass and a raised platform. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look between Gaius's legs. Um, is there gross. a? <laughs> Shut up. Um, I've got sixty foot dark vision. Can I actually see if there's any like a wall at sixty? There's feet? There's a wall there. Yeah, that's where okay. it ends. The light reflects off the wall. You're raised up about, probably about, I'd say ten to twenty feet up above. Uh, and this area seems to be filled with, like, a lucrid still water that has algae growing on it. The entire wall here, uh, is glass. Like, untouched glass. Wow. Oh. Is there and anything... Oh. Let me describe some more here. Hold on. I gotta grab my... Sure, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Page here. Um... Do you guys enter, or do you guys want to stay back there? I want to stay back there until we see if there's anything okay, else. I, I want to hear explanations yeah. first. In the ceiling in this chamber here, you notice um, there is the bottom of a much larger tube. You, you saw a smaller tube that Iskan analyzed, but it's currently like half out and the glass is shattered right here, like slightly falling out of the roof. The other one, there's another one that it seems to be fully loaded into the ceiling. You can just see the bottom. It's almost like loading a bullet into the chamber. Like they've been, they can be slotted into the ceiling. And you notice that this one's completely loaded up, and then this one over here is broken and slightly out. Question? Yes. Somebody what is this red button over here? It is oh. a red button, somewhat similar to the um, one that you hit on the pedestal to get in, uh, currently set into the wall. Uh, to the south, you see a blue button of an exactly similar make. Any magic from button? You do. You detect abjuration as well. Okay, so there's Obduration there. I'm gonna scooch over here so I can be in range of the other button. I'd say probably Abjuration mixed with some Conjuration. It's, you know. It's a lot of Abjuration, but that one to the south's got a little bit of Conjuration attached to it. I don't know if we should be hulking it or anything. How far deep can I see through the glass? Uh, you, can, you can see right through it. It's clean. That's the weirdest thing. It looks untouched. Um, and as you look down, you can just see the water. It seems like this section flooded somehow. Ah. Mm. You said that about the last button, and we were pretty much okay, so what makes this one different? Because we don't know what we're gonna activate. I mean, we didn't know that last time, but okay, there any, I see your Are there point. any words near the buttons? Nope. Mm. Before we press buttons... I want to go back and see what's to the north. Yeah, I want to go back and check the other rooms before we start doing crazy stuff. 
Is that broom still sweeping away, by the way? Yeah, it's still going. Wow. Hold on, give me one second before you start moving. Gotta... Is it in this? Is it in the same spot that's just like... It seems to kind of go back and forth through like kind of the main walking areas and around like the edges of the desk. This, it's you get the sense it's been sweeping here so long that it's actually like destroyed part of the floor just over time. Yeah. If only again, Glenn Grudd had one of these. Sorry. Did you? Did he hate his floors? Uh, she didn't clean Guys, much. Okay. As you look northward. You see shimmering in the light as you lift up. This, by the way, everything's pitch black in here, by the way. You see staring back at you inside of a, just a giant glass tube. You see a curled deer, like, crammed inside of one of these tubes that has a goat head growing out of its shoulder. And to the right of that, next to it, is a large reptile with two heads sprouting out, almost in like a Y formation, coming out of the same neck, sprouting in two different directions, also curled in on itself. Gaius, like, holds his arm to, like, Milo to, like, hold him back. Guy? It, what, how easy is it for someone to create a beast that was on the paper? Uh, I would have to analyze the notes. Did you find because, the key? No, I found things that don't look like the monster we just saw on the piece of paper, but someone looks like they're Frankensteining a lot of others. Kai's going to turn to Otho. Can we just pick the locks, please? What the hell is Frankenstein? Um, I don't. I don't know. It must. Have, it's a, I read books too. <laughs> damn you! <laughs> Mary Shelley's not, a treasure. Mary Shelley's a treasure, and it was written in giant. I took years to find that translation. Listen, Otho. If there's more notes in these drawers, we have to get them open. All right. Look, I'm going I, to try can, and pick. I can help. I'm going to try and pick the rest. The rest of the drawers here. All right. Which drawer do you go for next, then? Uh. Let's let's just go down the line now. I'll go for one. We'll go for one? All right, go for it. With advantage. Natural 20. Nice. Yeah. That one's really easy. It actually doesn't seem to be as much of a secure lock. And you pull out the drawer. Uh, there are two pieces of paper here, slightly smaller, but still, you know, big. And as you place them on the table, one is a biological blueprint of what appears to be a wolf or dog that has two heads coming out of it and like a red mane running down the back of both of its necks um you may roll an arcana check this one's a bit more challenging but you can if you wish to got something else here another diagram it's another natural 20 nice oh, damn uh, yeah. You've heard stories of these. They're creatures of the Underdark called Death Dogs. They're two-headed Underdark dwellers. Mm. Underneath I that, think... and I'll I'll let the roll twenty. I'll let the natural twenty carry over. You flip that one aside and pull out the other one, and it appears to be a two-headed giant, uh, specifically an Etten that you see. An Etten as well, a Death Dog and an Etten. Hmm. So these are naturally occurring? They all have multiple heads. And the death dogs I hear are fond of caves and cabbages. Or was it lettuce? I don't know. So somebody's not just putting animals together, they're doubling their heads. It's like they're trying to create it. Something like that. Is there one in those papers that show a lizard or a deer? We're, uh, uh, we're I'll a I'll keep looking. Yeah. Let's go for three. Okay. With advantage. This is some Resident Evil shit, Monty. <laughs> it is on a Guys, I found a name. Uh, Dr. 17. Wesker. Perfect. You open up easy enough, unlock the other one, and you pull out. And this one's different. The other ones seem to be, like, something you'd find in a book. This one is much different. It's handwritten. And you can see there's circles and points. It almost looks like a diagram for a shipbuilder or for a, you know, someone who builds houses, almost like a blueprint. 
and you see on it a long snake with a head on both ends. We found your reptile, but not the one you described. This one is different. This is a snake with two heads. Additionally, inside, you hear clinking, and there are small bottles containing what looks to be, like, just square cuts of snake skin, about, about probably six different types. Uh, we should probably keep going, see if we can find any other documents. Very well. I'll 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 take out the, the bottles of snake skin and I'll just I'll just pocket them. Okay. Pockets full of snake skin. <clears throat> and a pocket full of snake. Snake oil. <laughs> uh, let's go for four. Okay, with advantage, because Kai is helping you. With a pocket full of skins. Yeah. Oof. Ah, uh, that's going to oh. be an eight either way. Yeah, you try and open this one. This one's also rusted as well. Another rusted one. And I go for six. Okay, advantage. Uh, Thirteen. Are you fucking kidding me. That's a pass. You, this one's more tricky, and it seems a bit more secure. And as you eventually pop it open, you pull open the drawer, and you see, like, three blueprints. And as you pull them out and set them and, and, and shine the light on them, you see the first blueprint is a kind of an alignment of dragons, specifically. Specifically, uh, red and gold dragons laid out biologically. As you flip the pages, you see sort of a body diagram minus the heads with just a bunch. It's just all, all it's dense. I'll just say it like it's a dense medical diagram that is very hard to decipher and is like smudged and worn in places. The last one you see is a multi-headed dragon with gold and red dragon heads and a mixture of other draconic heads and in the corner stamped uh is the name false dizzy moto uh dizzy mono sorry i'll write that down for you in the center of that blueprint is a red mark like a large red stamp mark um, that you can't read. It seems to be in a different language. Alrighty. Can I identify the language at least? It seems similar to what was on the front door. Is it draconic? It appears to be draconic, yes. Can you read it? I sure can. It says transferred slash moved. Oh. Oh no. What? They moved whatever this thing was. Huh. False dizzy mono. Roll religion checks, the three of you. Oh boy, I'm. This is a hard one, but go for it. Are we too far away to hear the Eight. conversation? You two can also roll. Sure. Thirteen. I'm gonna be really surprised if I know this. Yeah, this is not good. Thirteen. You don't know what that is. Seven. Yeah, figured. yeah none of you know what that is. Did we unlock uh, number one? Yeah. You did. That yeah, was that the one with the uh, Death Dog and Edmund in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Question, two... if they're rusted. If they're rusted locks, can we bust them open? You can try to if you want. I, I have a dagger. Can I try to bust open the locks he couldn't pick? If you want to roll an attack, sure. Sure. Soft 20. That hits. Going to roll damage. Seven damage. All right. You kind of thrust the dagger in and kind of pop the lock out. It's starting to give. You may Heading. attempt again if you wish. 
22. That also hits. Five. Yep. You pop the lock out and it kind of scatters across the floor and the broom immediately rushes over and sweeps it up and kind of kicks it into a corner. Oh, finally! <laughs> Sorry, Otho, I just, I need to know what else is in here. I'm going to pull the drawer open. Okay, as you pull the drawer open, there are two pieces of paper in here. One is a diagram of a multi-headed serpent-like beast um, with about five heads and the second piece of paper seems to be a close-up of their heads with detailed diagram notes on it, essentially. Do any of them match what Gaius was talking about? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. Uh, you may roll a Knowledge Arcana, if you guys wish. Sure. Sure. Right. Sensing a theme here. Eighteen. Five. That's a snake. <laughs> That's a Nineteen. Snake. Uh... Gaius. So 20. Gaius, Eastcan, Otho, and you know, it makes a lot of sense for Eastcan in particular. Uh, this is a Hydra. <laughs> That's a Hydra oh, cool. for sure. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, yeah, I, I recognize that one. That's a Hydra. It's actually related to the the quote on the door on the way in. Did we... Did, did you crack all the shelves? There's one still left. There's, There's one, one left. still left. Number four, I, I believe. Yeah, I can whack that one if we want. Sure. Wow. Yeah, I'll help you. Take a, shot. Take a whack okay, at advantage. it. 19. 19 uh, hits. 7. Yep, you the same way, kind of begin to wrench. Uh, and I'll, said he was I'll, helping. Yeah, I'll attack as okay. well with my dagger. Do it. Mm. 19. Nice. Hey. That hits, Double go to roll damage. 19. I'm assuming I I can't sneak attack an inanimate object, so that's just you gonna don't. be four. <laughs> you you cannot. You're fine. Between the two of you shelf. both, between the two of you both, crowbarring in your daggers and popping it, you pop out the lock, and again the, the broom comes over and sweeps yeah. it away. All right, pull it open. What stares back at you on the diagram is a horrific humanoid-like creature. It has two malformed heads kind of molded together on a humanoid body that is thick with fat, as well as two arms that come down to like sort of hooked claws. And both of the faces are warped in sort of this snarling appearance. This one doesn't have as many like markings on it of notes, but it is stamped within the corner with unknown entity on it. Oh, good. Oh, Mr. Friend is here. If we don't know what it's called, it can't hurt us. It sure, has that's no notes other than it has just I'll unknown call it entity. Mr. X. Unknown entity is what it's called, yeah. And what uh, were the notes on it? Nothing? There's just like a few notes of its physicality. And again, it's very dense jargon. That's like, it's like you're looking at like a surgical diagram. And if you're not a doctor, that's not going to make much sense. So it's just uh, a lot of notes of physicality and things like that. None of the anatomy of the creature matches what Gaia said either. No, nah, not that it appears. Well, with that, I'm going to creep forward okay. to shine the light. As you I'm creep gonna forward. I'm going to follow behind for moral support. Can you measure out um, 40 feet to your left, please? Oh my god. Oh boy. Ooh. Give me one moment here, please. Yeah, it's a series yeah. of tubes. We found the internet. We found the internet, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so, I gotta, sorry, I gotta cross reference here. So, the double headed deer goat is in this one immediately across from you, the double headed reptile is in this one. Uh, Eastcan, you recognize the creature right away. It is a alligator. It is a two-headed alligator. Mm. This one uh, has a two-headed lizard in it, like some sort of iguana-like creature. Uh, the one immediately in the corner here uh, is a human. Uh, it appears to be a medium-sized human male with two heads forcibly fused together and long limbs, just like just like double the length that they should be, and the legs are about the same size as a normal oh. human. Oh, he's, he's gonna bust out. Uh, this one here, immediately to the north left that you can see. Sorry, I didn't check my list here. 
can't believe uh, you fucking found the SCP Foundation. Is just <laughs> is just sludge, and you can just see a little bit of coarse hair inside. It's just jelly. Uh, and then this one right here is broken and empty. Oh! Whoa. Oh, good! <laughs> Alert sounds, Blair. Uh, I look up, uh, is there any sort of semblance that the creature came from inside and or whatever has fallen out has moved like footsteps or whatever uh you'd have to get close and do an investigation check all right well i'm the fighter here i go hey guys it looks like something broke out uh we might want to stick close hey, hey bad news yeah it's not over yet oh oh there's more Oh, oh, there's, oh, goody. <laughs> As you get inside, you can see through the broken tube this one right here. This one uh, contains, again, just jelly with, like, eyes. You can just see, like, just some floating remains of eyes inside. Oh, my God. <laughs> there's something wrong with your homunculi. Uh, so... Uh Point of clarification, the tubes that we can see that have non-jellied inhabitants, um, are they, like, suspended in a fluid, or are they just in open air? They are suspended in what appears to be a fluid of some kind. Do they look like and they're it's, moving and or it's, breathing? And it's dark. They don't appear to be. You could try and do a perception check to determine it, though. I'm gonna um, get real close to make sure. And I'll do okay. perception Oh, I double clicked. I'm sorry. Uh, 15. 15? Doesn't appear to be breathing. It doesn't look like this one is breathing, but I don't know if that's really uh, uh, a good thing. Are, is there any magic coming out of these tubes? At the bottom, similar to the other tube in the other room. It's just like the other tube in, in, in the other room. Uh, I was going to check and see if whatever came whatever came from the broken one did it come from the inside and or did it move elsewhere roll an investigation check this is gonna be a hard one because what looks like happened happened a while ago Good. so I'm it's hard guy. to determine i'm the guy with minus one <laughs> with six. impossible to tell cool uh i'm gonna scooch over here to see further down the hall okay this one here, this tube to the, uh, between the center. I'm just going to list them off. Sorry for podcast viewers. We do have a visual reference, but all you know is there's tubes full of fucking weird things in here. That's all you kind of need to know. But this one here contains the curled up, um, fetal position body of a troll with two heads. Oh! <laughs> uh, what happens if I shine the light down this way? Oh, come on, little bunny. Here's to be more space. Bosco, please don't forget to move Kai, because if we move into a room and we start initiative, I don't want you to have to be all the way back there. Ooh, there's something there. It looks like a... Some kind of force field. <laughs> you see what appears to be the bars of a prison. <laughs> Christ! Oh, we're locked in here with it. Also, because you're now here, I'm going to list the remaining creatures you've seen. Okay. Uh, this one here, this tube in the corner, contains a two-headed owlbear. Suspended oh, the Jesus. And this tube contains one of the creatures on one of the diagrams, which is a death dog currently suspended in liquid. And then this one here contains a similar dog-like creature to the death dog, only it seems to be more like a wolf that has three kind of differently grown heads on it. Oh my god, dude. A Carabaris. Um, what about way over here? You see a door that is rusted slightly ajar, similar to the one in like the main big waterfall tube area. I'm gonna go check that out, guys. Just, can you watch my back? Absolutely. Wait, you're taking the light with you and none of the rest of us can see. I'm... I'm gonna move right here. That's also, just, just for 
posterity's sake, I, I do keep those diagrams with me. Okay. You may add them to your inventory. Can I see further in, Monty? Do you have dark vision? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. You do see that it does continue on forward. And then, Gaius, you're there? Yep. Okay. As you peer to the north, you see a hand in the cage, the prison cage. Oh, God. <laughs> A wrinkled, mummified hand, just like, just sprouting from the darkness. Guys, what do you see? Hand. <laughs> Why I, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Sorry. I will really have a funny. look. I will have a look with my dark person... Vision you light. see. I'm sorry. No, you sorry. Form. I'm... Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Not no, what I meant. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see the form of a humanoid currently sitting in the corner of this prison. Oh. You can't make out details because dark vision does not give you details. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's not moving though, is it? it seems still. Uh, paper, please. <laughs> coin, coin. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see. There's a lip over here, so I'm going to st stealthily move my way over here to get a okay. better vantage point. Roll stealth check, then, please. Oh, with um, disadvantage. I love. You know what? It's whatever. I can try. A seven. Okay. You creep as much as you can. Your foot, your your hooves <laughs> clacking on the very smooth stone floor. And you see in this prison. Mandora hook hand card. Oh. Oh. You see uh, what appears to be three prison cells. I will reveal more there as you have it there. In the corner of the most leftmost or westernmost prison cell, you see the gaunt mummified remains of a humanoid of some description. And you see that there are three empty prison, uh, like, prison cells. And then in the corner of the room, stacked from floor to ceiling, are large kennels. Like, kennel-like cages. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, no. About mm. 12 of them in total. I'm really starting to think it's very unlikely we're going to find any treasure in here. It's not treasure we're looking for. Uh, is there anything magical or ra uh, reading from the from the body? I mean, it was treasure uh, we're looking for. <laughs> you do not detect any magic from this body, no. It, they just want a magic item. They didn't say what kind, so. Uh, can I see anything further in, or is that a wall, Monty? You. See I'm, I'm just. Yeah. Ow. More kennels. Okay. You do see a skull in one of them, though. <laughs> and it just kind of keeps going into darkness, no wall? Uh, it seems to keep going into darkness from your position, yeah. Guys, I'm gonna have a look. Wait, I don't think we should be moving anywhere alone right now. Not with that one that broke out. You're, you're right next to me. Yeah. Okay. I'll trust... <laughs> Iska, I'll trust you to, to watch, watch my back. What if I didn't want to watch your back? <laughs> I was hoping I could watch my own. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> I just wanted to watch my own back. <laughs> just walk by. I was hoping maybe you could watch my back as I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to turn the corner to see if I can get a better look at this inside the kettles. Mm -hmm. All right. You see on like the second shelf up, kind of uh, in this section, you see just the white bone of a skull. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just, I, I, I know that I know that I can't see a lot of details, Bonnie, but I am looking for a wall. Yeah, the wall, Perfect. you see the end of the wall in the corner there. Okay, so we finally found a wall, okay. Well, fucking Scooby-Doo production music playing in the background right now. Look for the panel that's colored differently. That means it's going to break away. 
the background artist didn't do that one. <laughs> uh, so, is this door... Can I open the door to this cell? As you go and try and open the door to the cell, it is locked. Beans. It has a, like, a padlock on it. Hmm. Master lock? Whoa. <laughs> I heard those fucking suck. <laughs> is there a door right here, Money? Mm-hmm. It has a square of the, the kinetic sand trapped in the middle, like right in the center of the door. Oh man, another one. Any runes or writing? Nope. God damn it's it. Gotta, it's gotta be a key or something around here. Try the try the infinity symbol again. Alright. I'll I'll draw that. Okay. As you place your yeah. finger into the sand and draw the infinity ah. symbol. Oh, <laughs> well, Mark. It I was in the slides, wall for a second, sorry. It slides open. That's so huh. cool. <laughs> I love that those are animated. Can I, I just know, say? it's so great. I don't know how you did that, Monty, but I'm very glad you did. It does a lot. Oh, oh, oh nope. Good. Good. No, that's a nope. That's a nope. Um, You see a small room with a sigil on the floor. It's dusty, but this room is very, like, preserved, if the, if the best way to say it possible. It's got, like, old stale room smell to it. Is this a language or with the with the runes? Roll an arcana check. Oh boy. Uh, do I have enough light to check as well? Uh, yep. Yeah, with Gaius, there you do. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, there you go. Seventeen for East Guy. This is a teleportation circle. Oh! Oh, they moved it. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, they moved it. <laughs> oh, no. This could get really bad really fast. Um, Would I be able to see if that door down there um, has the same sort of sand situation? It seems to, yes. Okay. Just gonna slowly... I, I want to wait to see if people come in with me. I don't want to get too far ahead. Uh, if anybody comes in here, uh, don't step in the center of the room unless you want to find yourself somewhere else. Really? What? Whoa! Just falls <laughs> into it. <laughs> Fucking, I keep stepping into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, <laughs> the, wall. <laughs> the wind chimes play. As you guys <laughs> enter into the room, the door <laughs> slams behind you. Oh, oh, fuck. Give me one second here. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh. <laughs> All right. Summon a dragon. Are any of Summon you... a worm. Are any right. of you really in love with your arm or leg? The door ahead of you, Milo, has the exact same square. I will try to do the infinity symbol. <laughs> door slides open. And you immediately see staring back at you a bunch of eyes on a oh. shelf. Oh, oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Karapika? One second, sorry. Now you're fine. One is being we found the Sanrio store. Is that you, homeboy? <laughs> oh. You see a shelf uh, that contains jars of what appears to be eyes. Uh, as well as some scrolls and some books that are all kind of, like, messily tossed. And Milo, roll a dexterity saving throw for me. Yeehaw! Uh, <laughs> a cleric dex save? Natural one with a nat 20 would on I, the other side. I was Sounds about ask, right. <laughs> considering <laughs> I was day. watching his back, would I have been able to <clears throat> assist no. in any way? Not at all. Okay. Milo, as you walk in, you look to your right and you see a skeleton staring down at you, <gasps> but it has like an extra skeleton hand coming out of the center of its body and its mm. head looks elongated with an additional two sets of eye sockets on its oh, forehead. Chris. And you <gasps> jump and like collide into Gaius and take a moment, but it is actually not alive. It is you Scooby Doo just... jump into my arms? Yeah. <laughs> It is just a skeleton standing on a stand. Soinks! Soinks! Is everything all right? Well, oh, just... Oh, just a skeleton. Oh, that was yeah. terrifying. 
Yeah, but that's not a normal skeleton. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Uh, what have we gotten ourselves into? A mystery. <laughs> a mystery gang? <laughs> I... <laughs> I wanted to do the funny lighthouse, but... This room is humid as fuck. It is warm and humid in here. Ew. And... This shelf to the south seems to contain just, like, various jars of, of what appears to be components that have probably molded away. However, this shelf contains just shelves upon shelves. Connor, you're breathing into the microphone. Uh, this shelf in the corner here contains jar upon jar of pickled heads suspended uh, in fluid. Uh, oh, and it's not the funny Futurama kind of heads either, I take On it. On this shelf, which is takes up, like, is basically a bottom and top shelf, is a massive jar, almost like a miniature, like, tube that contains a massive humanoid head just suspended in liquid uh. with long, wiry hair and, like, a gaunt look to the face. Oh, since we're standing here, uh, does the light go into the left? It does, yes. And you can actually hear from this point, shh, shh. That sound I heard again. Wasn't that the broom? Oh. Milo, you see the broom working. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we've come full circle. Milo. Yes. You detect magic in this room. Oh, boy. Right there. You detect oh a little moat of conjuration magic. The skeleton's looking at you in a different pose. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it, it changes poses every single time I look away. No, um, we're not doing don't blink. I can't what, do uh, don't blink. What, can I determine what the item is that's producing it? You see scattered amongst the worn and decrepit and moldy goods, a wand standing on a, like a little little stand currently, like a little mm. little display stand between two jars, one that contains the head of a blue dragon wormling and another one that contains the head of a goblin, uh. a crystal, sort of like, twisted glass wand. Uh, I guess? And it's, uh, you said conjuration? Conjuration, yeah. I guess I'll take it then. Okay. As you go to take it and kind of clink off the shelf, you kind of your wrist kind of bumps one of the jars. You kind of look at it. You hear underneath the shelves, and you watch as coming out from under the shelves. Not that. That's the door. <laughs> the door. Look out. The door. <laughs> look out. Door combat begins. Oh, uh -oh. snake. 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 Oh, Snakes is. Snakes is. Snakes is. Oh, is. Snakes is, is. And I need everyone to roll initiative as Snakes is. Hey. Cool, I had a nightmare no. about this. Natural 20. Six. <laughs> this is. You didn't see what I did to a fucking fish, my dude. What did you get? Eight. That's going to be a 17 for me. Alrighty. That's an 11. Oh shit. This isn't the Motorola combat music. Yeah, it is. Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> it seemed a little bit different. Uh... Turn it up a little bit. It's a little quiet. Sorry, I gotta grab my fight book. Fight uh oh, book. the fight's out. Snakes are gonna bite your lights out. No, no more biting. Mark. I'll tell you when there's been no more biting. <laughs> okay, I've been here bad. for too long. Me, the bite master. Right. Let's see. Oh, natural 20 for Gaius. Yeah. Okay. And then Otho. And then Kai. And then Iskan. Are you sure the snakes don't go before me? And Milo. <laughs> oh, I've already written all them down in the order. All right, Gaius, you immediately spring to action as four snakes come bursting out, and you, you're holding the light as well at the moment. Notably, these snakes appear to have, like, necrotic little miniature heads that just kind of are just being dragged along with them. 
Ugh. Oh. Cool. Uh. Well, no, putting myself there would probably be a stupid idea because that adds for flank. So, I'm gonna run my little self on over here and fucking slam jam on a snake. You got it. Come on in. Slam. Stop getting hard to say who? There it is! 21! That, that absolutely hit. <laughs> Anyway, I don't understand. Ah, you ain't it's ready. Oh my god, you oh, yeah. downwards oh. like just like whack a mole this, and it just Gallagher's into gore. It is dead. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> there was a snake. It is gone now. I don't follow. Oh, time to say who did it. <laughs> oh, I, that's a song. I assume. <laughs> Got it. Go ahead and roll uh, the hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's punch the snake. 18. That hits. Oh, wait, no, that's wrong. I can't use that. Sorry. Offhand. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, how do you, you swing have to again? It. There you go. 23 on a scimitar. That is. Yeah. Jesus. Eight Jesus. Flashing. Wait, I thought, wait, how are you it's offhand just, with the lantern? It's just four because, remember, it's offhand. You don't add your bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So four. So well, four points of slashing damage. Uh, it still kills it, though. <laughs> As you wait, cut its head he, off. How, how does he offhand with the lantern? Oh, that's a good point. Just drop it. If he's holding the lantern and holding a weapon, how the hell is he swinging? I'd a say he weapon? could drop it if you want to place it on the shelf or place it on the ground. Yeah, I'll just put it on the shelf. Daint daintily place it on the shelf. The first, yeah, first move. Yeah, battle axe the first snake, and then walk over calmly, place the lantern down, and then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my right. turn. Also, I, mm. what? What? That's what? 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 Turn. No, my brain is going a million miles an hour. Sorry. Did I fuck up somewhere? So, not to be the rules lawyer, I don't think a scimitar is a light weapon, and even if it was, it is. a battle axe. It is. is. Well, but a battle axe isn't, and both weapons. No, would need to a be battle axe is one handed. He one -handed. used it one handed. It literally says battle axe one handed. But it's not a light weapon, is what I mean. Both but he uses action to, to use. But not both weapons don't have to be light. You can do one attack with a normal weapon, and then offhand has to be with a light weapon unless you have. Yeah. Something an ability that lets you do okay. otherwise. Yeah. So he's he's doing it right. All right, well, that ends your turn, guys. Yes. Hopefully. All right. <laughs> no, you can kill another one if you want. I mean, it is, now the, snake, it is now the snake's turn. Oh boy. Damn it! <laughs> this one immediately goes for you, Milo. And solar oh, flare. No. Solar flare with disadvantage. My eyes. Uh, I rolled it's... the exact same thing twice, but I don't think it's gonna hit. That's gonna be a fifteen. That will not hit. You uh, light up the face, and it kind of goes and clonks against the front chest plate of your armor and lands on the ground kind of dizzy. The other snake sizes up towards you, Otho, and is going to attack you. Don't. 24. Oh, Jesus. Nah. <laughs> I need you to make a constitution saving throw, please. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Connor. Uh, 18, <laughs> though. Nice. There you, go. you only take one point of piercing damage as it bites your hand and kind of clasps Ow. on. Jesus. That sounded like. It bit him! It bit him! Connor, what did you do? <laughs> I kicked a bottle. <laughs> Don't do that. Kick that snake. But I'm not done yet. Oh, <laughs> Wait, there's more. Coming out of this shelf comes another snake. Look, Why are there so many snakes? <laughs> and there's another one. Fuck! It's a whole sneegin. Another one right there. <laughs> this snake immediately is going to flank you, Otho. What? <laughs> Do you flank my snakes? They got they tactics. Got... Uh, does a 12 I'm being you? snanked. No. All right, this one here is going to attack you, Eskan. Don't. Uh, 15. That hits. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, three. Okay, you take one point of piercing damage plus five points of poison damage as it oh. latches onto your leg. Okay, so you're going to have to clarify for me what that does differently. It is just a different damage type. It's, so it's just a damage type. Yeah, it's not, not an actual... effect or anything. Yeah. No, you are not poisoned is, is yep, an effect, but you just took poison damage, which is a damage Ooh. type. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. It just sears your uh, flesh from the inside. The other snake is going to <laughs> oh, attack you, Milo. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, is that all? Uh, that's really 21 to hit you, Milo. That will hit. I need a constitution saving throw, please. Uh, let's go... 12? You're fine. You just take one point of piercing damage as it reaches Ew. up and kind of bites you on the neck ever so slightly. A soft kiss of a snake. Yeah. That ends the snake's turn. Otho, it is now your turn as you are flanked by snakes. Alrighty. Uh, I, I am I am snaked. Uh, however, I am going to use my cunning action to disengage. Okay, you got it. It's a bonus action disengage. disengage. Disengage is a bonus action. Get over to Milo over here. Uh, and then I'm going <laughs> to try and swing at him with the saber. You got it. Snake him. Snake Hi -ya. That's going to be a 15 plus 15. 2 is 17. 15 hits and 17 definitely hits. Uh, for 9 slashing damage. Nice. You jab and just, just stab your dagger through the heads of this snake and it is dead. Uh, yep. Bonus action, action. I am done. I'm just gonna seeing seeing how the snakes are are more towards my brother now and not towards me. I'll just take another cautious step forward to try and body block. You got it. All right, Kai. It is now your turn. Uh, <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Um, just a snake, bro. Great. Um. I'm gonna go one, two, three. So you're gonna four. get an attack of opportunity from this one. No, I cut the corner. I didn't. I didn't. You can't. That's a wall. You can't cut the corner there. Well, fuck. it's literally a wall. Yeah. Great. And even if you did cut the corner, you're still moving from a threatened square to a non-threatened square, which would provoke. Yeah. No, I, he wasn't threatening me though. He is. It's a snake. He's... He threatens everybody. <laughs> no. It yes, is a because danger. all snakes are evil. evil. So it will get an opportunity to attack. Do you still want to move with that in mind, or do you want Fuck to Fuck it, try? why not? Let's have some okay. fun. Uh, that's not great. That's a 14. That'll hit. Okay, go ahead and roll a constitution saving throw for me, please. 19. You're fine. You take one point of piercing Ooh. damage. It snaps Boy. at your heels as you run past. And then I will use the help action to give Otho advantage on the snake in front of me. You got it. All righty, Eastcan, it is now your turn. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, man. You want to punch that snake for me? Uh, you don't want me to punch it. You, you don't want me to punch it. Uh, you want to you wanna, you wanna bite it? I don't really. <laughs> Show you. No, sir, I don't like it. I don't mean to alarm you, but you are snaked right now. Um... <laughs> Firing uh, a ranged spell while you're melee threatened, it doesn't provoke, right? That's a 3 5. No, it's not 3 that 5. That is a 3 by 5, fine. yeah. Right. No. Okay. So if you attack someone within 5 feet of you with a ranged spell, it's with disadvantage to hit. Right. I'm not going to attack something within 5 feet of me. Okay. Then there's no uh, disadvantage. Uh, trusting Milo and Gaius to have his back, uh, despite being bitten by the snake in front of him, uh, Iskin is going to set his eyes on the furthest snake away from him. Uh, hold out his hand and cast Ice Knife. I will say... Yeah, I'll say you You can see it clearly. All right, 20, that absolutely hits. Uh, Spank him. That will be... Uh, for six piercing damage and eight cold damage. Uh, gone. You That's absolutely sick. ice this thing. <laughs> Does he have a... Quite dex literally. Uh, he's dead. Damage. It doesn't matter. Even with half, he dies. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's a snake. No, I got you. I'm not mad snock. that I killed the snake. <laughs> snus, 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 knock. You like stab it into the wall with the ice. It's like gored into the wall with the ice. Damn. Uh, and for my bonus action, uh, seeing as that went down much more easily than I anticipated, I will turn towards the snake that just bit me, and I'm going to use my hungry jaws to bite him back. Okay. Bite it. I'll bite you back harder. Fuck you. Oh, damn it. Five. Five. You go down to bite it, and then it, like, like spits at you, and you're like, ah! You realize, you know, getting bit in the mouth probably isn't great, and you unfortunately do not get your attack off. I have bigger jaws. Why am I afraid of you? Yeah, <laughs> That'll be my turn. All righty. That brings us to Milo. It is now your turn. 
I was gonna do a thing, but I think we got this under control. Um, man, for the first time, I'm gonna get my mace out and just squash this thing. You got it. Mace cocked uh, and loaded. Nice. Clack, clack. To me. <laughs> Eleven. Misses. As you go to swing, the snake darts out of the way and kind of like skirts around the mace and immediately spits and hisses at you angrily. Oh. I hate these things. Get, get, get off. Get, get out of here. I'm just, I'm just flailing at the ground, missing over and over again. It's like the world's worst whack-a-mole. <laughs> um, you know what? I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll call a turn. I'll set up flanking for guys. All right, you got it. That brings us again up to the top of the turn. Or Gaius, it is now your turn. Uh huh. Kill. <laughs> Kill. <laughs> yeah, Ab absolutely hits. Kill. Five. <laughs> It is dead. You just squash <laughs> cool. it. Cool, cool. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I just love. Haha, -ha, twenty-five. Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, seventeen. That hits. Four. Uh, another four points of damage, uh, and that kills it too. Uh, hold on. Let me double check something because I want to see how much movement that was. Should be fifteen feet. Yeah, so that means one, two, three, four. Wait, wait. One, two, three, four. Uh -huh. All Sorry. right. It is now the snake's turn. This snake is going to. I'm going to roll a. They're not smart, they're snakes. Um, wow. I'm going to roll a d4. What? I'm going to roll a d4 a on an odd number. It's going to go for Kai. On an even number, it's going to go for Gaius. I've seen a snake uh, open a door. They're pretty intelligent. It is going to go for you, Gaius. Okay. Uh, that is going to be an 18 to hit. It meets. So it beats. So I need uh, your old constitution saving throw for me, please. 15. Okay. You're fine. You take one point of piercing damage. Motherfucker. You have temp HP, you're fine. I, I know, I know. That's why I'm just like... <laughs> it, 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 like, it, like but, it bites I have a giant just, spot of atrophied skin on my leg, and everybody else is just like, oh, what an inconvenient yeah, little... Ga poke. Gaius like, looks down <laughs> at it. Ga Gaius looks down at it. That was not very ha-ha of you. It's that wasn't test. very pogus of you, Snake. That wasn't very ha-ha of you, Snake. Oh, though you hear movement behind you, and you see coming out from underneath, another snake comes out. Oh, it. for the love of... And it's going to attack you. Uh, Snake it's attack. Miss, uh, thirteen. Uh, just barely misses. Yeah, it's just not that you managed to like back into Gaius and out of the way. Yeah. Another snake comes out. Don't. Where are they coming from? I'm Lord. gonna roll a d6. Uh, it is gonna go for you, Gaius. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ooh, that's pretty good. That's a. 23 to hit. No. That I needed a con save then. Nine. Ooh. Nine. You take one point of piercing damage. Okay. Plus five points of poison damage. That was not and very last wahoo but, of you. And last but certainly not least, <laughs> Isken. Huh? You see another one crawl out from the shelf. Can I speak to it in parcel tongue and tell it to go back? <laughs> <laughs> no, it launches in the air for your face. Cool. <laughs> but it does miss as you kind of bring up your staff and whack it out of the air uh, with, unfortunately, it rolled an eight, so it misses, ending the snake's turn. Otho, it is now you Otho, it is now your turn. Uh, there are snakes. Um, I'm going to, bonus action, disengage once again. Uh, and I'm going to swing at the one that my brother was helping me with. You got it. So, no flanking, but I do get advantage. You do get advantage. <laughs> uh, God. And let's see if I crit. I don't, but it is a 15. 15 hits. All right. 14 slashing damage. You flay this thing. It is dead. Ooh, snake sushi. I've heard you it tastes like, like chicken. It, it's got like a Y shape too, because it's got two heads. You just got to carve down the middle. One meat snoodle. I've made snooshy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stay right where I am to give Gaius uh, flanking. You got it. All right, that ends Otho's turn. Kai, it is now your turn. 
And I'm going to give him advantage. I use the help action. You got it. You bring down your foot and you step on the snake's tail so it can't move. <laughs> you know, that normal sound that snakes make. <laughs> yeah. These are not normal, these are not normal yeah. snakes. Like They've that, shown that, nothing to symbolize that they aren't normal. It's like that old cartoon of the guy hitting the mosquito and it lets out a scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> the fucking Tex Avery scream. Yeah. All right, Eastcan, it is now your turn. Ha <laughs> ha. Since I already have my staff out, the best I can do is thwack the snake in front of me. So here we go. Give it the old thwackle-daggle. El Kabong. That's a three. You hit the ground and the snake kind of spits at you. Ha-ha. You're doing Turn. great, Mark. <laughs> You're doing great. Oh, man. Do you have a spell or something? Play a ranged spellcaster, they said. Your party won't possibly constantly get in the area of effect of all your spells. It'll be fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> choose better spells, spells. prepcaster. <laughs> Connor and I on the same wavelength. Maybe go pick better spells, bro. I got to tell you, guys with two knives, I got to tell you guys, this is really great. <laughs> <laughs> Looks at the camera in panic. Said? Looks at the camera in, I wish. Are you good, buddy? Yeah, that's my turn, yeah. That's your turn? All right, that All brings us do. to Milo. It is now your turn. I'm approaching the snake menacingly. You do so? Oh, so you're approaching me. I mean, thwack. Uh, plus, <laughs> four, plus two, no, nope. I, I can't nope. hit. No. Nope. Once again, this you swing and you thing. miss. I like to imagine Eastcan and like Milo are like, all like you know, three point eh, on their eh, hands eh, and knees, eh. just like, eh, eh, <laughs> trying to hit it. You're, you're fucking, that, you're fucking fighting Miss from... Viper from Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> guys that are just killing all of these guys, looking at the rest of the party like, why are we here with them? <laughs> Look, I want to save my spell slots, all right? <laughs> This is the worst. I, honestly, I don't blame you. I just find it funny you can't roll over a fucking 10. Uh, that seems to be the common thing, like, for three straight sessions, so. Is you and Connor heard, both. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, All right, that brings us to Gaius. Top of the turn order. What are you doing? <laughs> Please go. <laughs> Oh, you, have oh, thank you. you are taking all of the rolls today. <laughs> you this are. is the Gaius episode. Uh -huh. It is ha -ha. gone. Haha. <laughs> ha -ha. Hi, new friend. Twenty-two. <laughs> Bye, new friend. <laughs> that hits. Haha. -ha. Four. Gone. Both. Ladies of those. and gentlemen, the fighter. <laughs> and your friends, I... which are you? <laughs> I eagerly I would await like to again, see... once again, point out the versatility of the five E fighter right there. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I I eagerly await to see when someone, the person who's calculating how much damage people do per session. We're just Thank surrounding this one lone snake. <laughs> the, the snake is and like- none of you will hit it. He's I surrounded. Got, got, guys like stands Connor. over it. Guy, guy <laughs> stands over it. He, he, ha, ha. I can't handle right. much more. It is now the snake's turn. The snake don't, is going to choose its target. Don't summon more snakes, please. He, he, hoo, hoo. Uh, it's gonna go for you guys. Hee hee hoo hoo ha ha. Uh, that is gonna be a 24. I need a con save. Fuck, fuck, shit. Hee hee ah oh, I regret. Hee hee ah hee. Ooh. 23. Okay, you're fine. You take one point of piercing damage as it bites off a part of your patch of your fur on your leg. Have you not rolled under a 15? I haven't. He hasn't rolled under a 15, and you haven't rolled over a 10. Yep. Not that ends the though. snake's turn. It appears there are no other ones. That brings Thank us to you. Otho. It is now your turn. All right, let's wrap this up, hopefully. Uh, I can finally normal move over to here. And now that he is surrounded, uh, I'm going to take a saber strike at him. <sighs> That'll probably hit. That's a soft that 20. Hits, yep. Oh, he is so Let's dead. see. Oh. That is 16. <laughs> oh, so damage. dead. Probably tripled his health. Just in so, one quick motion, just whoop, flick its head see, off. Uh, let me see how much you did. Uh, you not only did you, you, you did times 16 what, its health. Oh, <laughs> Jesus <God>. Christ. Oh. <laughs> All right. So we just had to hit these things and they die. Excellent. Is anyone badly hurt? <laughs> Ow. I was bitten, but I think it's venom sacks were out of something. 
<laughs> Mine wasn't. <laughs> Guy is like holds up its leg. It's like it's welted in purple. It's like a giant well, welt on the leg. Are you? Are you? Mm, are you it's looking, purple. Well, if it's that seems to be normal. Purple, how can you see it? <laughs> are, are you? Are you looking pretty rough, buddy? No, probably not as bad as uh, Eastcan. How's Eastcan yeah, looking? I'm, I'm not great. All right. He I was will... already beyond just physically damaged. He's a little freaked out because he was already kind of uh, uncomfy as we went, and now he got poisoned by a snake. Well, just get not how most back. people want to spend their day. Yeah. Get four, get four health back with with my uh, lovely touch. <sighs> Thanks. No problem. Just. Be safe. Huh. Did all... Be safe? Those snakes came from out of nowhere. What do you mean, be safe? Well, you know, just... Just something we say. Wait, wait. Uh, you, what, what did you pull off the shelf that made all this happen? Uh, it looks like a wand. Like a magic wand? Uh, something like that, yeah. So wait, we got the thing, right? Like, that's what they wanted? They wanted something magical? We can go? We need to see if there's anything else in here. That's part of the Do mission. We? Yes. Uh, uh, I'm holding the lantern up for the south. You do so. Out it goes. Can you measure down 40 feet, please? <clears throat> the south uh, calls sure. for aid. I'm sorry. My thing is going all types of fucky right now. Uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. 40 feet. Gaius, as you lift up the lantern and face it down, you see something that we're going to find out next week. And that's where we're going to end the session for tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. What a time. Bye, Austin. Bye, Bye Austin. Austin. Goodbye. Bye, Austin. Austin. <laughs> oh, no. Man, that snombat really took up a lot of our time. Connor! <laughs> what? <laughs> Snob! <laughs> Snob? This is unexpected 16, you said? 16. Yep. It's 16. Right. 16. Kendall. Someone's playing back the episode. <laughs> what? Bosco. <laughs> I'm editing. Shut up. <laughs> uh, that's uh, oh, I'm so excited. I've been so excited for this. The 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 fan art and the memes were on fire tonight. <laughs> yes, they were. Oh shit. I can't wait to look through. This <laughs> 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 is so good. Oh, this is fine. His ends are always pretty good. Oh, God. Fantastic. Boy, howdy, wasn't that a fun filled <laughs> adventure that quickly turned into an oh my God, why are we here? Why are we I got here? A, I have a great wand. suffer. <laughs> I, I got a wand. I'm having a blast. Uh, a wand that isn't yours. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, neither is most of the things we find in dungeons. A fair point. I cannot argue that one. Well, thanks for stopping by, everybody. This is a, <laughs> a, a great little episode. I love uh, this session so much. Yeah. Let's go around the horn and in, uh, 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 do our outros. Oh. Uh, Gaijin Goomba, where can they find you? And what are you up to? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Gaijin Goomba. Every Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Central. Uh, I've become addicted to Scrap Mechanic, which is a fun little buildy open worldy actually kind of messed up story uh game uh robots oh. destroy the world but everything looks nice um aside from that doing a lot of build streams too uh i had my birthday stream yesterday actual birthday was the day before thank you everyone for your kindness uh it was a fantastic time and here's hoping for more sorry i just i just thought of a killer episode title for this one. Oh boy would you like to hear it? Yes. Yeah. Putting our heads together. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. Oh, yes. Do it. Inspired. Uh, well, uh, Mark, where can they find you? What are you up to? You can find me on Twitter.com at Mark Allen Jr. Here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming. Follow the adventures of my fat sleepy cat bunny on Instagram at chonk for life uh no stream tomorrow possible stream friday night uh there's a new pokemon tcg set that releases this week and i technically got stuff a little early because the store i went to had a pre-release event 
but I have been saving to open them on stream. It's been a long time since we had a Pokemon stream. I will try and get that uh, going on Friday, and hopefully some more Digimon survive on Saturday, assuming the world doesn't explode, uh, which has happened a lot for me recently. But I'm trying, guys, I promise. That's it. All right. Man, you made me want to go to fucking Digimon tournaments. Yeah. Good. Me and Gaius uh, ended up playing Digimon. It's just awesome. Yeah. The hell is Digimon? <laughs> Why do I have this deck? No, different Gaius. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, Zeta, where can they find you? Nobody wants to play Magic the Gathering with me. You can find me. <laughs> you can find me over at twitch.tv slash Zeno. Uh, and CC Backlash on Twitter. Uh, lots of indie games. Uh, Friday is going to be a continuation of me checking out more Sage demos. Uh, showcase some indies being made over there on uh, the... What is it? It's the Sonic uh, Amateur Games Expo. Yes, that's what it is. Uh, beyond that... Uh, I will also be playing Curse to Golf because that game has consumed my life and I want to try and start from hole one and get to hole 18 in one stream. Uh, as for D&D stuff uh, on my Twitter, keep uh, keep an eye out there because that's where I've been posting uh, little snippets of the next Aloysius' Guide to Social Acceptance book, which is going to be more Spelljammer focused. Uh, why would anyone want to play as a Grell? Don't worry about it. I'll tell you why. But you'll have to buy the book to find out. But you can see artwork of it. it it's funny. It's a Grell with a fez and, and glasses, even though they don't have eyes. Fezes are cool. Yes. So are the Grell. And now you get to play as one. That's me. Hot damn. Bosco, where can they find you, and what are you up to? Bosco. Bosco get is out, dead. Get out of chat and answer. Okay, Bosco's dead. Uh, I knew it. The snakes got him. Darn. Uh, well, Monty, where can they find you, and what are you up to? You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Tomorrow should be more Dungeon of the Mad Mage. We're back in the dungeon uh, after some uh, water deep and uh, skull port adventures. We're back in the thick of it. I'm very excited to get back into it. And the party has two new quests that they have to complete. And I'm very, very excited. So come check it out. You, you it's very chill. Here. Wait, oh. I did the thing. <laughs> uh. You don't need to have any prior knowledge to join in for the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. It is just a giant dungeon crawl, so come and check it out. And then on Sunday, should be more Majora's Mask. I'm a fish now. <laughs> a fish. fish. Yeah. All right. Bosco, are you back? He, he yeah, did his I did it. Thing. I did it. Oh, you did it. God, you don't he even listen it. when I do it. Stop being muted all the time. <laughs> I wasn't muted. I just wasn't there. Ah. Stop being yeah, not there. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I can't talk into a microphone. I'm not at. I'm not that magical. <laughs> uh, not with that attitude. I'm just going to do the famous voice actor that. trick of throwing your voice. Yeah. I tried, and then I realized the gain was all the way down. Darn. Stop well. Stop being bad at your job. Uh... In that case, uh, I suppose they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. We're streaming Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, da -da -da -da, doing more Legacy of Kane this week. Uh, Yahoo. I'm probably going to wrap up Shadow of the Colossus next Tuesday. Yeah. You're very close yeah. to the end now. And then, uh, not sure... Uh, might go back to Tabletop Tuesday, but I might just for the hell of it play, uh, what was it? Pray, pray for the gods. Uh, which is a very much inspired by Shadow of the Colossus game that I'm very interested in. Uh, but yes. Um, other than that, check out my DMs Guild, or at least 5th edition subclasses, including the 
uh, Treasure Hunter Conclave for the Ranger, which is in production right now. Visually out. Why am I so busy? Got a lot of shit on my plate. A lot of shit you might be hearing about soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wiggles eyebrows. <laughs> um, see a doctor about that. My wiggling eyebrows? Yeah. Damn. Need to see an eyebrowologist. <laughs> it's terminal. <laughs> Fuck. That means it's exceeding the known, the maximum known velocity of an uh, <clears throat> object falling to Earth. They're going to take my eyebrows. Uh, yeah. Eyebrow um, placement. Indeed, I need an eye eyebrow transplant. Um, uh, in order to pay for that, we're sponsored by Die Hard Dice. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's right. Die Hard Dice is your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to dieharddice.com, use the code UNEXPECTABLES without an exclamation point. Uh, you can save 10% on your order when you shop at dieharddice.com. Uh, and uh, we got to get some bits and subs out here as well. Purchase <laughs> shirts. Uh oh god. <laughs> uh where did you leave off, Boss? I think it was remember? two after Travis. Travis A Carey. Travis A Carey. I think it was the two that Where I the hell are him. you, Travis A Carey? Hey, como se son? Is, uh, is he down here? Is he down here? Bo, 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 I do not know. Saxophone, pling, pling, violin, I can't. I can't see it, so I'm going to Great. start at a random interval. We'll go for Z-Man Stardust. Thank you for the 29 months. Weed Pixie, thank you for the nine months of Prime. My sub baby finally arrived. I can't believe it's already been most of a year since I caught up to the Unexpectables. Thanks, you guys, for making my work week so much more enjoyable. Uh, Brett Ultimus, thank you for the raid hey. with a party of 577. Whoa. Hey, hey, Brett. Damn. How's it going? Hey, what's up, Brett? That's a raccoon. Is a raccoon that plays a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the raid. We appreciate it. Uh, Nova Flame, thank you for the 14 months. Tiki the Troll, thank you for the four months. Uh, I'd have something clever to say, but I'm just got back home from work, so this is the message. Well, there you go. Dragon Heart 69, thank you for the Prime sub. Shadow Tag 34, thank you for the Prime sub as well. Gauze 21, thank you for the five bits somewhere in the dungeon. Uh, Wesker, I'm going to release Ouroboros. Uh, Neo Ander MCD, thank you for the 18 months of Prime. Loving the new characters slash campaigns so far. Can't wait to see where this is all going. Also, I can't wait for Kai to go Super Saiyan 2 someday. <laughs> Got the hair for it. You assume his class is Super Saiyan, or is it? Hmm. Do, 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 no, do, do, Sane watch. is the race, Bosco. Sane is the race. Come on. He's watch him be like a barbarian and just hulk out, brother. No, Sane's the class. They're human. No, brother, you're hulking oh out. On, guys, God, guys I I've seen you, Yu Haku show. I know this fucking show. Can we please move do, on? Do, 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 do. Tamarin, thank you for the 30 bits, my good friend. Uh, episode title, Deep Dark Secrets. Hmm. Zenlita, thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, Containment Breach. Ooh, that would give it away. I think I would give it away, though. Yeah, that's a good it's one. It's loose. Uh, Hogs Jr., thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, Five Heads Are Worse Than None, or something along those lines. A bit lengthy, but I think pulling, so, putting add, it... Um, you, have to, you have to add or something along those lines to it. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Gray Fox, thank you for the 28 months. Finally caught up, sadly... I'm here halfway through, so I'll catch you in the VOD. P.S. Thank you for making my day at work the best when I listen to you. Aw, oh, shucks. The best. The best. The best. The best. Twisty the Kitty, thank you for the 29 months. Tix Dixel, thank you for the 21 months. Late to the party, but I finally hit the big 21. Thank you for the fun game tonight. Uh, Tawan Knight, thank you for the uh, 1,050 bits. Dropping the green bit bomb. Zenlita, thank you for the 300 bits. Episode title, Pack Snacktics. Damn, that's good. <laughs> that's also good. That's really good. Game time. Thank you for the 500 bits. Like Tabuya123, thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, 
Uh, red warnings on sailor's mornings or heads will roll. But it wasn't Ooh. red in the morning. It was red at the night, which means red at night, sailor's delight. Mm. And then we had fish. Fish. Mangetsu Tatsumasa. Thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, Heads Up. <laughs> Gives away. Because uh, uh, of all the multi-headed things. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, I'm so sick of these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> uh Bubba Bob, thank you for the 500 bits. Finally bought my first set of die hard dice for myself. Pay tribute to Todd. <laughs> That's Todd, it's, yeah. It starts. <laughs> uh Shinichi Kid, thank you for the 100 bits. This was so fun and creepy. Great work, everyone. And Monty, why? Cause fun. I love this stuff. This is cool. This is fun. It's fun. It's fun. S Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. And also, it's my birthday this Friday. Have some bits for the Unexpectables. Uh, none for Bosco, though. This is why no one likes birds. Uh, the Atom Bomb, thank you for the 120 bits. Episode title, Best Left Alone. And finally, we got Owl Keeper with a 100 bits. Glad I could watch a full episode live. The best title I like is Connors. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that one, actually. Yeah, putting our heads together is really yeah, good. Honestly, no, that's, that's, that's yeah. absolutely perfect. All right. Uh, oh, I should mention, uh, probably should have done this at the beginning of the episode, but I should mention uh, this Saturday, Sarah is going to be out of town and unable to play Gateway. So instead... I am hosting a very special one shot on Saturday instead of Gateway. Uh, it'll be fifth edition and it'll be in a uh, special homebrew setting that I've been cooking. Ooh. So, so tune in on Saturday for. Uh, yeah, tune in Saturday for Yankane Shipwrecked. Uh, and with that, we need to find someone to raid. Yeah. Uh, Bracky's live. Bracky is live. You know what? I'll take it. All right. <laughs> what, should, what should our raid message be for Bracky? Gay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> hiss. Hiss. Just hiss at him. Just hiss? All right. That yeah, seems yes. so mean. That works. Boo this man. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Eddie Wait, Izzard. Let me check. What is, is he drawing? The Eddie butts Izzard bit. Oh, everyone he probably just comes is to drawing show butts. With snakes in that. Be aware, his content butts. might be a little bit late night. So yeah, he's drawing right butts now. Oh. So oh. what oh, is he yeah. drawing? I just—he's drawing tits. Is yeah. he trying? There you go. Those are the butts of the chest. So you, same thing. Should we? Should that? You know what? Fuck it. It's fine. Fuck it. You know what? Sometimes. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Yay. Hiss at the breast drawer. See you next week. When Bye -bye. we die. I'm so excited. Boobs! I'm gonna kill some. Boobies.